live from Warrior Field on the north campus of the University of Waterloo. It's Warriors football on OUA TV. Tonight, it's senior night under the lights as the Waterloo Warriors host the McMaster Marauders. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us on OUA TV. My name's Adam McGuire alongside Luke Balchin. Luke, the Warriors at 0-6 after a disappointing loss last weekend at York. They know now the playoffs are out of their grasp, but plenty to play for as the Warriors have shown lots of signs this year of being able to move the ball against some of the best teams in this league. Now they got to get it in the end zone. Absolutely. We're going to look for uh, the Waterloo Warriors to come out and, and come out firing. we got Seniors Day. We just acknowledged all the seniors that are leaving the program and uh, their last game at Warrior Field. And as you said, Warriors are, are playing for pride right now. It's Friday night lights. It's beautiful weather. There's a little bit of wind here. And uh, just talking to the guys earlier, everybody's playing loose, playing free. Uh, McMaster is coming in. They, they want to make the playoffs. They're 2-4, and four, and, and this is a huge game for them. So we'll look to see if the Warriors can play a little bit more loose and, and maybe the, the Marauders be a bit tighter. Uh, and, uh, excited for a great game today. Yeah, you said it, Luke. The Marauders in a log jam at 2-4 and four for that last playoff spot or two in the OUA. Seven teams make it, and McMaster after tonight finishes against York another one of those teams at two and four so lots to still figure out here in the OUA at the playoff picture but for Mac it's pretty clear right win tonight and then win next week and you're in so that's the stakes for them and for the Warriors they'll they're going to try to find victory by holding the Mac passing attack at bay led by Keegan Hall Absolutely. Keegan Hall, uh, number two right now in the nation in passing, just below uh, Taylor Elgersma from Laurier. Uh, you know, he's a fourth-year guy. He's, he can read the defense really well. He's got a big arm. He's super accurate, throwing for over 70% of completion percentage. And it uh, looks like the Warriors are going to kick off now, so we're going to see Keegan out the gate. Uh, we know, uh, you know, the coach Potasic, he, he's always come from a line of a great receiving play. And, uh, you know, Warriors, uh, or sorry, the Marauders rather love to spread the ball around and uh, we'll see what the Warriors can do to slow them down. Cole Crossett will kick it off with the wind at his back on your screen from right to left. Ball has blown off the tee. McMaster's going to be down there starting running back today, uh, Adam, so we're going to see how that plays in the uh, factor. Uh, he hurt his hamstring in practice this week. So they're going to have a backup coming in. Um, so they might be encouraged even more to go to the air. It uh, looks like they're going to be starting against the wind. The wind uh, is picking up. We have somebody holding the ball right now, as you can see on your screen. And so uh, Marauders throwing against the wind to start. Look to, they're going to look for that quick passing game uh, as, the, as they're really good. Uh, they love those crossers, and, and we'll see what the Warriors uh, can do to stop it. Yeah, the team leading rusher, Braden Kelly, as you said, 36 carries out today. And this is taken by Isaiah Shields on the kickoff. And Shields is taken down. Good coverage by the special teams of the Warriors down at the 18-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see what K-Mac does. Coach uh, McDonald, the defensive coordinator for the Waterloo Warriors. Um, we'll see if he wants to bring pressure against Keegan or, or play back and play into coverage. Uh, it's going to be important for our front four to really come to play today, Adam. Yeah, pressure on the quarterback has been a pretty big difference here. The Warriors were able to, with several design blitzes, get to Taylor Elgersma and force him into a couple of interceptions when they saw Laurier here back in week five. So first and 10, here's Keegan Hall. He's gonna roll. Hall to the outside and incomplete pass intended for Aiden Nemeth and maybe a bit of a tough one into the wind right off the bat. Yeah, Keegan was rolling right into the wind there. Um, McMaster was able to set the edge really nicely uh, with one of their receivers uh, coming back, cracking down on the end. Uh, Keegan got outside. He had a guy open in the flats, but uh, just missed the throw. So good, good job for the Warriors here, second and 10. So a good start for the Warriors. All the way down at the MAC, 18 pushed back are the Marauders. Second down and 10. Hall with three receivers to his right. Plus to Shane in the backfield. He goes in motion now. Hall, little quick bubble screen. And near the first down marker, but about two yards short, is the ball carrier, James Priestner, who was the recipient of the little screen pass. Now see if they want to go for it here. Looks like Coach Potasic is going to call on his 
His, looks like the big unit's coming out, so expect quarterback sneak here. The backup quarterback's coming in. Uh, it's a huge stand right away for the Warriors. Yeah, Lucas Barisi is in under center. Name should sound familiar. Of course, his dad, Jamie. Balk is looks to like the sticks, but it looks uh, short. Uh, I think we stopped him. According to the coaches, we stopped him. And maybe according to the spot here. Let's see here where the ball will be marked. Uh, looks like they got a favorable oh, spot. Oh, they got it. Yeah. Lucas Barisi's second effort will get it. And Waterloo coaching staff didn't love that spot. But into the win like that, Luke, I, I mean, I think that's the play you have to go with, right? You can't, even with the punter Michael Horvat being one of the best in the country, be so hard to flip the field. It's going to be interesting to see how both coaches play uh, into the wind versus uh, with the wind today, making those decisions. Keegan Hall to throw. Hall has some time. Ball hung up in the air, and it was dropped. Kind of wobbled into the wind. Jackson Taylor couldn't haul it down with three Warriors around him. That's another instance of, of Keegan Hall making a good throw, but it kind of wobbled at the end a little bit, and, and the, it was hard for the receiver to make the grab. The Warriors were playing a zone defense versus that quads look, and the receiver sat down actually really nicely into the hole. A great throw on time, but couldn't make it happen. Second and 10. So once again, a second and long. The Marauders didn't convert last time, but got enough to go for it on third down. Hall to throw. Again to the wide side, and it's going to be caught to, by Nemeth. Nemeth, though, pushed out of bounds, and he's about two yards shy of the first down. No, they're going to move the sticks. He's up over the 40 before he stepped out of bounds. Where are they going to mark this? Oh, at the 38-yard line. That's a, that's a great throw by Keegan Hall. He's, he's throwing to the wide side into the wind. Looks like the Warriors were giving him that throw. Um, we played a cover three look where our DB just backpedaled right away. So that was where the ball was supposed to go. But into the wind, they were giving him the throw, and, and he took it, and uh, they moved the chains. So a second and long conversion as McMaster continues to march here at the 38. And we'll see our first rush of the evening for the Marauders. It's Matt Duchesne, uh, Micah Duchesne on the carry. Averaging 5.4 yards a carry. Got just about that on first down. Yeah, McMaster does a little bit different than most teams where they, they throw to set up the run. So they get teams backpedaling, get teams on their heels, get teams playing with a, a light box, we call it, so less linebackers, and then they can run it inside. Second down and five at the 44. Michael Omaseni, the Mike linebacker, in conversation with James Hinsberger. And a whistle comes in. Timeout, McMaster. So the Marauders and head coach Steph Potasic didn't see something they liked on this second down and four and a half. And McMaster does a great job. They've, they've always done this under coach Potasic of using motion to set up their plays. And so on your broadcast, you'll see receivers running from the wide side of the field to the short side and the short side to the wide side. You'll see their at, uh, Z receiver, so that's the furthest most outside. He'll motion down, and, and what it does is get the defense on their heels. If they're playing zone, they have to back up a little bit to, to see what's going on in front of them. And so look for that today to see if they continue that and uh, and what the uh, defense for Waterloo um, is going to do to stop it. Yeah, the Marauders, we talked about Keegan Hall. The pass run splits are pretty jarring. 430 yards a game the Marauders are averaging. That's fifth in the OUA, but 332.8 yards in the air and only 97.2 on the ground. They are the most effective passing offense in the OUA, but they're going to run it again on second and four, and a big play up front by the Warriors. James yeah. Hinsberger was the first one there to make the stop. I love that play goal by Coach uh, McDonald there, uh, K-Mac. What he did is he went for the 30 front, so three down linemen. And so uh, McMaster and Coach Potastic are thinking, oh, let's just run the ball. There's only three down linemen. And then we blitz both the, the Mac and the Sam up in the middle, and it made the play. That was awesome. So Horvat will punt this one away, and he was nearly well, blocked. Punt. Oh, the ball might have been deflected, but it 
didn't get far. Oh no, the punter, oh. And flags come down. Yeah, so this ball was recovered by Ramsey Keats, wasn't onside, so that's a flag. But you're right, Lucas. It was fortunate uh, for the Warriors yeah, there. <laughs> this is, you know, the accidental onside punt almost, where yeah. the punter recovered the ball. He wasn't in the neighborhood right away, but could have made his way there for sure. Yeah, what can happen in Canadian football is if the punter uh, kicks it and starts ba uh, uh, bouncing backwards, he, he is able to pick it up. He can't advance it, but he can recover it, and that was actually right past the first tail marker, and he was about to jump on it. And uh, number 40, I think he, th he heard some people yelling and screaming and thought they were yelling at him. And so he jumped on it. And fortunate for the Warriors, gets a 15-yard penalty. And uh, we're moving down in field goal range already uh, with the wind here. Yeah, Nolan Caban and the Warriors offense will take over on the 33-yard line. Quinton Springer in the backfield. Anthony Miller out now with an injury as Springer busts a hole. And Springer, a good first down run, gains about 13 on first down. I, I talked to Coach Conway before the game. He was excited to see what uh, Quentin Springer can do in his, in his first uh, game as the full-time starter. Um, obviously, our, our thoughts are with uh, uh, Ant, uh, Anthony Miller going out with a pretty big injury, and, and he had surgery just this week, which is unfortunate. But uh, let's see what Q's going to be able to get done today, and, and that was a great start to the game. So it's first down right away again for the Warriors. Handoff is to Springer again, and Springer has the edge. Quinton Springer inside the 10. Springer hauled down at the six yard line as the Warriors with two quick rushes after the penalty. Right down, knocking on the doorstep once again. Yeah, great play call. They, uh, McMaster Marauders brought the blitz. They're playing man, actually a zero look, meaning no safety, brought everybody up. We ran to a counter week and everybody was on the strong side. Uh, Great play by Quinton Springer, bouncing it out. Here we go, set up the Warriors for first and goal. On the six, now the red zone has been a struggle for the Warriors. They've only scored nine touchdowns in 19 trips. That's the worst in the OUA. Springer lowers the shoulder pads and forges ahead for about three or four on first down and goal from the six. Warriors brought an extra O-lineman in. So they're playing with six O-linemen and a fullback and, and really just setting the tone saying, we're coming downhill, McMaster. Are you going to be able to stop it? And looks like they kept that same personnel in there. And we'll see if uh, we have two cracks at it here. I anticipate Coach going for it. So uh, Coach Conway knows he has two chances to try to punch this one in. Springer got halfway there on second down and goal from the three now. Springer with it again. Springer bounces what one. What a great Springer, run. touchdown, Warriors. Quentin Springer, after first contact, kept going, bounced wide, and gets into the end zone. The Warriors are on the board first. That's just a great run by Quentin Springer. As we said, getting his first opportunity to be the running back, the feature back for the Warriors. He hits the line, he gets stopped, keeps the feet turned, and bounces it out. Touchdown, Warriors. Couldn't ask for a better start. Yeah, you said it, Luke. Could not ask for a better start. Nolan Caban hasn't even thrown the ball yet, and they've got a 7-0 lead. That drive all Springer after the punt into the win. Extra point is up, and good after the snap was bobbled a little bit. Riley Webster, the holder, I don't couldn't see if the snap bounced into him or if it was on the placement of the ball, but a great job by the veteran kicker, Cole Crossett, to kind of pause and still chip that up over the bar. Yeah, like you said, Nolan was, uh, we're able to score a touchdown with the win without having to pass the ball, which is, it's gonna be huge um, through this game where McMaster's gonna have to probably try and rely on the run like, game a little bit when we're going against the wind. And then they can air it out a little bit when they, uh, when they have the win versus uh, Waterloo. Looks like, as Coach Conway said before the game, and Bertoya told me they just want to get the line of scrimmage working, push with the O-line, and see what Quentin Springer could do today. So, just past the six-minute mark here. Warriors will lead 7-0, and cross set to kick it away. Isaiah Shields back deep. And Shields 
will take it. Again to the 20, and he's taken down at about the 23-yard line. That's where McMaster will start their second drive of the evening. We'll see if uh, Coach uh, Coach Pretoria and K-Mac on the defense here uh, continues to, to bring pressure on second down and, and play a little softer zone on first down. Welcoming the throw from uh, Keegan Hall into this stiff win. First down here for the Marauders. Marauders coming out with a heavy package as well with a tight end set. Hall to throw through the middle of the field. He's got Priestner. And Priestner breaks one tackle and reaches the ball across the line to gain. A gain of 11 on first down. That'll move the sticks for Mack. Yeah, as I said, for the last, I want to say, 20 years now, McMaster has been running crossers. Um, and that's just the staple of their offense, staple of Coach P, Coach Potasic. And so Warriors are going to have to keep an eye on that. When you're playing zone and a, and a crosser comes into your zone, uh, you have to be aware that as soon as he catches the ball, you got to lay a lick on him. So the ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Wind picks up. Handoff is to Duchesne. Duchesne gains six, maybe seven on first down. Looks like they're bringing in, uh, again, the McMaster Marauders, probably because they're going into the win here, but they, uh, they're they liking their heavy package right now, so they have a tight end set with a running back and two receivers on each side. The second and short looks like they're, uh, they're going to that same look. Second down and four. Oh, now they got two, uh, two fullbacks in with the running back. Hall, another handoff to Deshane, and Deshane makes a move up to the midfield stripe. A tremendous run by Micah Deshane as he eluded one tackle right at about the line to gain. A nice little sidestep and a big gain for Mack on the ground. Yeah, coach, uh, offense coordinator for McMaster, Chris Hopkins, looks like he's uh, he's okay with running that ball on second down. Um, you know, if they can establish the run, that's going to be huge for the Marauders offense as we know what they can do through the air. Yeah, and with this win, you had to wonder on second and four, was it three down territory anyway, right? Kind of closing in on midfield. We saw what happened with the last punt. Bit of a tough snap there. It was corralled. And on the outside, a big lick is laid. That was a great job by the Warriors. When you run that, that it's called a, a jet sweep. When you run that jet sweep, what you want to do is you want to try and cut off the flow. And they actually pulled two linemen, uh, the Marauders did. And uh, we got a, we had great pressure and forced the, uh, the tailback or the receiver that got the ball to, to slow up. And then once you do that, the pursuit happens. And, and he, got a, he got licked. He got popped. It was Everett Reed who took the little pitch on the end around only gained two so it's second down and long once again Waterloo brings the pressure pass is intercepted oh, oh no it's dropped oh my off the hands of Everett Reed and then off the hands of Michael Omaseni Omaseni's thinking that third pick he's, he's, he's trying to take that one to the house he got a little, a little ahead of himself it is going to be a punting situation for Mack now but it was that close to the interception for Michael Omaseni, who had two here the last time the Warriors were at home against Laurier. Yeah, he's, he's a, he has a knack for being in the right place at the right time. Uh, he, he's a good positional player. He gets nice drops on those, uh, on those second downs and uh, another great play by him. Low lining punt fielded by Haru. Flag is down for no yards, but Haru, can he get to the outside? He can. He gets to about the 32, a modest return, and there should be five tacked onto that after the low line drive punt that was taken by Haru off of one bounce. Yeah, you can see that's definitely going to be the strategy from a special team standpoint. Uh, I anticipate when Waterloo gets it, Coach Pretoria is going to be real aggressive on third down, which might change the play calling for Coach Conway being able to think, I might have three downs here to get these, these 10. Uh, but right now with the wind, uh, let's see if we can uh, continue to pound the rock and then maybe set up a play action over the top. Yeah, these are two of the best punters in the country, Cole Crosset and Michael Horvat. Horvat comes in averaging 46.9 yards a kick with a 79-yard long. 
Yeah, McMaster Marauders have uh, always had great special teams units um, for as long as I can remember. They're always uh, a great punter and kickers here. That 79-yard long might get challenged tonight, but certainly not until they swap sides here. So the Warriors at their own 36 will start things off here. Springer in the backfield. Caban gives it to Springer. Springer has another hole. Springer makes a move, cut to the middle. Another big gain by 34 in black and gold. Yeah, Springer's feeling it right now. He brought a, had another six hole line set with the fullback, bringing them all in. He, he made a great cut to the weak side. And, uh, you know, Springer's known, we always called him the Thunder and Lightning with him and Anthony Miller. We, he'd been the Lightning because as soon as he hits that crease, he's gone. Big time gain into Mac territory here. At the McMaster 46, flags come in. Springer with it again. Springer has another hole, and Springer lowers the shoulders up over the 30. Let's see who the flag is on. Might be offside on McMaster. Yeah, it, it was hard to see what the, what the call was, but uh, great another great run by, by Springer We're in an outside zone there. He, he made that one cut. What we talk about when we when we coach running back is, you know, when you're running outside zone, you want to go go horizontal, horizontal, and put one foot in the ground and hit vertical. Looks like uh, Coach Brady's is trying to inspire his defense to uh, to come to play here against the run. Not a happy man right now is Scott Brady, the DC of McMaster. It was offside against Mac that was declined, of course. We might be thinking, uh, maybe thinking play action uh, pretty soon here. Hand off again to Springer, though. Springer has another hole, and oh, Springer almost broke, it. almost broke it. Ethan Stewart made a great play to grab on to Springer and take him down. Up from the halfback position. Yeah, he's running with a, with a pep in his step, absolutely, today. And, uh, you know, Coach Conway is, is going to the well, and I like it. So this will be second down and four. We're staying in the heavy package with a, a, a old lineman as the fullback here to the weak side. Caban is going to throw. It is complete. Evan Basiliga pushed out of bounds. I think that's coming back. Great play call though. They brought everybody. They went to another cover zero. Um, we had one and one on the outside, and Evan one on the route. But uh, looks like it might be coming back. Yeah, flag on the play. It's illegal contact on the Warriors. Yeah, wondering if that was uh, one of those uh, run pass options, Adam. Usually that happens when we have a legal block in the back where the old linemen, sorry, legal blocking downfield rather, when the old linemen are going downfield to try and make a, a, a run block because they think it might be a run play, and we pull it and throw it, which is, you know, it happens, happens at all all levels, even uh, in the in the CFL and NFL. So now we're kind of behind the chains here. We are in field goal range. If we can get a little bit more yards, we have an opportunity to kick for three. Yeah, second and 14 from the 32. Yeah, it's so hard for those linemen on those option plays. Play clock down to two. Warriors got to get rid of it. And they get the snap off. No, they're going to whistle it down. Maybe Waterloo got a timeout first. They did, in yeah, fact, as right. the play clock was ticking down. Those are important five yards because, again, we're in field goal range. So if we don't uh, end up getting anything here, those five yards are important. It uh, looks like there's a bit of confusion there with Evan Basiliga. He was in, in quads to the, to, the, to the field side, and he, and he was whispering to Nolan, kind of coming back and forth. So uh, I like the timeout. Play clock was expiring. And uh, we're looking for a positive gain here to set up uh, Cole for three. Yeah, for right now, it would be a field goal of about 39. If the Warriors didn't gain anything here, of course, they would love to gain 14 and move the sticks. That would be the plan. Interesting to see what uh, to, uh, Coach Brady comes out with on defense here, if he's going to you know, let him play in front and, and come to tackle or, or he's going to try and get a negative play. Three receivers to the boundary side. Caban's left. Caban to throw. Caban 
has pressure, gets away. Nolan Caban, downfield, it yeah. is caught! Oh, what a catch! One foot inbounds! There you go. Riley Webster with the catch, is that Webster? That's Webster, yeah. Oh, what a grab from the rookie. He climbed the ladder and put one heel down and the Warriors convert on second and 14. That's great pocket presence by Nolan. Uh, he stood in there, stood tall, kept his eyes downfield, finally brought it down, but didn't look to run, looked to pass. And uh, he, he found Webster by the sidelines, climbed the ladder, and first and goal. Here we go, Warriors. Ball on the nine. Riley Webster's had a really good rookie season. Local wide receiver. Caban to throw, oh. and it was dropped. Crossing route there, and Basiliga might have been bothered there by Braxton Peters, the safety, who yep. came down and kind of tracked Basiliga across the field. Yeah, they ran that, that slip play that they like where they, uh, they fake the inside zone to the field and, and kind of slip out that fullback, uh, Evan Basiliga, H-back to the, to the boundary there. A good play call by Coach Conway, but we just couldn't convert. Uh, I think if he, if he hit him on the run, he, he had a chance to get in. So second down and nine. Caban to throw again. Caban has a man. It's too high for Basiliga. Maybe just a little bit behind him. And that'll bring up third down and nine and a field goal attempt from Cole Crossett. So Warriors convert on the second and 14, but then unable to get in from there. So the red zone woes Remedied on the first drive, but not so much here on the second one. And I'll tell you what, though. Evan got a hand on that, and if he did not get a hand on that, that was going to go pick six the other way as the uh, the corner was sitting there waiting. So uh, great effort by, by Evan just to get a mid on it and uh, preserve a, a field goal opportunity here. From 16 yards, cross set, up and through. That'll make it 10-0 Waterloo here in the first quarter. Warriors have really after several years of struggling with starting off on the right foot, have really had some good first quarters this season. They led last week 14-0 at York. They took the early lead against Laurier. They took the early lead against Guelph. They led, led, it that, led that game through most of the first half. Yeah, it's funny you say that because, uh, as you mentioned there, starting slow was, was the thing that Coach Pertoya was continuing to preach. Uh, he wanted to change around for these Warriors, and, and now we're starting fast, and, and we're, just, we're just not playing four quarters right now. Uh, so we'll have to see what ha comes up in the, in the second quarter and second half here, but uh, great start for the Warriors. McMaster will elect to take the ball at the 35. Two minutes and six seconds to go here in the first quarter. 10-0 the Warriors lead. Keegan Hall to throw. Hall is going to be flushed out. He's going to take off and will slide. Gains about six and a half or seven. It's a smart decision to slide when uh, Michael Onaseni is, uh, is coming at you. Uh, smart play by Keegan there. Yeah, Onaseni, in addition to those two interceptions, a couple of forced fumbles in that Guelph game, including one on the one-yard line when Marshall McCray tried to punch it in. Yeah, Michael came in when uh, James Hinsberger, who was a starting middle linebacker, got hurt. And James is now healthy, but Michael's been playing so good that they moved the Hinsberger back to Sam, which he played in his uh, his first two years. So um, the linebacking core is super strong this year. Yeah, and coordinated there that with the injury to Arden Martinez, who was the starting Sam right. linebacker. Yeah, that, I, I would take those three guys over over almost all the units in the OUA with uh, Bowen uh, playing that wheel linebacker and Owen Semi in the, in the middle and, and Hinsberger at the Sam. That's definitely our, our strongest unit on defense uh, for sure. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll continue to see them uh, balling out today. Yeah, strong and deep as well. Nate Mortensen's had a good season cycling in when he's been needed. Meanwhile, that was Duchesne on the second down carry, converts it for the Marauders. So it's first down again for Mack at their own 47. Throw is complete. Right at the sticks to Jackson Cooling. Picked it off the <coughs> turf and it's a gain of about nine and a half. Uh, Warriors are, are in a coverage called uh, a weak cut coverage. So our, our, our halfback to the weak side, which is uh, Sue Latmore, is going high. And that creates a little bit of a bubble right there. Uh, we need our Will linebacker to push out as, as fast as he can. But he, had, he was actually tied in by the tight end. So uh, that's a great read by Keegan. And, and that'll continue to be there if uh, that coverage is being played. Might be the last play of the first quarter here. 
Hall will make sure it is. On second down and short. Handoff is to Duchesne. Duchesne is swarmed, a gain of only about two and maybe two and a half, but that's enough to move the sticks. So, Warriors lead 10-0 after 15 minutes. The Marauders trying to respond here on this drive. They will flip things over and have the wind at their backs when we come back for the second quarter after this. Welcome back to Warrior Field. After one quarter of play, it's 10-0 Warriors. Adam McGuire and Luke Balch with you. McMaster, first and 10, now with the wind at their back. And Luke, let's see if they go to more of an aerial attack. Blitz coming, and Hall is almost picked off. He was smacked by the linebacker, Keyshawn Bowen, and then Omaseni got a hand on the pass. I was surprised they didn't throw a flag there. Is a, a little bit of a head-to-head -head contact, um, but I'm glad they didn't because it was, it was a fairly clean play. Um, once again, Michael Omsteni getting a, a nice deep drop at the middle linebacker position and getting him in on it. So 14 and change as the clock starts here in the second quarter. It's second and 10 from the 51 of Waterloo. Little delayed handoff here to Duchesne, and Duchesne has a hole, and he will plunge ahead for a first down on second and long. The Marauders run a little draw that works for 12 yards. Yeah, Warriors went to, a, again, a 30 front, so they have three down linemen, and our linebackers got some deep drops, thinking, uh, anticipating a pass by Keegan, so there was a, a room there. Um, that's a good play call by Coach Hopkins uh, and the Marauders. So now at the Waterloo 39, and this is likely in Horvat's territory, maybe right on the edge. With the wind at their backs now. Hall to throw, he's gonna go deep. Pass was intended for James Priestner, and there's a flag down. Another pass interference call. Yeah, Fr Priestner looked like he maybe got turned around a little bit by a free hand of a Warrior defensive back. Yeah, I, I think if uh, I, I think it was Isaiah, if, I mean, if he didn't do that, that was probably going to be a touchdown. So we'll take the 15 yards in that standpoint. But you can already see the difference in in the play calling and, and how Keegan Hall's dropping back when he's with the win right now. He looks confident and he, he's looking to start spinning that ball down the field. So it is pass interference, 15 yards, and that will put the Marauders at the Waterloo. 24 yard line. Looks like the Warriors are gonna stay in that 30 front, anticipating passing with the wind here. Uh, we'll see if McMaster wants to run against it or continue to let uh, their, their top rated quarterback uh, throw the ball around. Paul's gonna throw again. Blitz comes and he finally gets it away. Everett Reed, and Reed is hit hard, but right at the sticks, that's enough for a first down. He set up a bit of a screen there and the calmness of Keegan Hall got that ball away before the pressure got home. Yeah, if you can throw a screen into the pressure, where the pressure comes from, that's their best case scenario. If you can get the lineman out front, which we did. I'm, I'm surprised we uh, we actually tackled him there for, for a gain of 10. 
looked like it was going for big yardage. So let's see if the Warriors could do a bend but no break style defense and, and hold them to three here. Kevin McNeil bringing some pressure here for the Warriors. Hall is going to throw. Hall has a crosser in the middle. It's Priestner, and Priestner can't get to the corner. He gets right to the first down marker. And I think it's enough for a first and goal for the Marauders. Yeah, the concepts, the passing concepts that McMaster uses is they have a, a, a deep route combination. And so it's either a deep in or a comeback or, or a, a post route. And if it's not there, then Keegan just comes down to the, the late crosser coming across the field into his uh, vision. And we've seen it three times now. And so the Warriors are going to have to keep an eye on that. Um, it's good to keep him out of the end zone, but uh, obviously now it's first and goal. Ball on the three. McMaster looking to respond. Handoff is to Duchesne, and Duchesne. Good stick. Taken down. Gain of maybe one and a half. That was a nice play by James uh, Hintzberger coming in from the linebacker position. He shot the gap. And so uh, we had a, a pulling lineman, and where he pulled from, uh, James shot that gap and, and came in and met the running back head-to-head -head and pushed him backwards. So it looks like McMaster's bringing in the heavy package here for second down. They need two yards. Warriors uh, follow suit, bring in their heavy package, so it's big on big. In the trenches here. Looks like they said a quarterback sneak. Yeah, yeah, Barisi again in at quarterback. He's going to bounce to the end of the line. Nope. And he does not get in. Tackled at about the half yard line. So now McMaster's got a decision to make. That's a that's a bit of a bold call from from two yards out running a quarterback sneak. Uh, usually that's a one yard play, but um, looks like Breezy's coming out. No, he's going back in. They're probably going to try it one more time. Yeah, they are going to try it one more time from the one. So hard to make a stop from the one in the Canadian game, of course, with the one yard neutral zone. Barisi. Barisi is He's in. in for the touchdown. Yeah, the first one he tried to go a little bit of an outside, we call it outside sneak, um, where he, he tries to pick it apart outside. Uh, and that time he just buried underneath the, uh, the left guard and, and put his head down and uh, turned the feet. And that's a good play by McMaster. So McMaster responds here early in the second with the wind at their back. Their first major of the evening and Horvat will look to tack on the extra point. That was a good drive by, by Mac. Um, obviously they got excited to, to go back into the air where they did and, and a couple untimely penalties um, by the Warriors continued to move the chains. And so the cat and mouse game continues uh, with, uh, with the wind playing a huge factor and, and we'll see what the Warriors can do if they're gonna keep uh, Quinton Springer going on the ground here. Yeah, Quinton Springer in that first quarter, seven carries for 85 yards and a touchdown, 28 his long and with the success the Warriors have had running the ball. You would think that Quentin Springer will be a big part of now into the wind running this offense. Yeah, we'll see what, uh, what Scott Brady does, the defense coordinator for McMaster, because what I saw there at the end of that first quarter, they went to a 50 front, so they had five D linemen, sort of the opposite of what Waterloo was doing, going to a 30 front and three D linemen. And so this, uh, the 50 front, it's easier to, to plug up gaps and then let your, your couple linebackers you have flow to the ball. And we'll see if he comes out uh, with that, knowing the Warriors are going against the wind. And we'll see what uh, Coach Conway and Coach Pertoya uh, draw up against it. Horvat to boot it away. Tries to get some air under it. It's Nick Morgato on the return. Morgato, Morgato cuts to the middle. And he's to the 25, he's still on his feet and finally taken down. Spot him at the 25 yard line. That's where Waterloo will start their drive. Nick Morgato, the Kitchener native, the rookie, with his first return. We're gonna spot this at the 24, not the 25. Looks like we got a man down here, Adam. Yeah, Aiden Palmer 
is slow to get up. Our Warriors are going to start in that jumbo look that they like to bring out right now with the six O lineman, the six the six lineman playing as a fullback, uh, and then Evan Basilig in the backfield with Quentin Springer. Right, like I predicted, the, uh, the McMaster Marauders are coming out in, in with five D linemen with the one uh, middle linebacker and the 50 front. And we'll see if uh, how it plays for them. Wait on wait up front. Springer gets the carry and puts the shoulders down to plunge ahead for about three. A modest carry on first down. And this is the tricky down right now. Second and seven against the stiff wind. Are we gonna be able to continue to run the ball or are we gonna need to pass uh, and, and throw some, what we like to call quick routes, um, some easy completions for, uh, uh, for Nolan. So we are staying in heavy, but we can still pass out of this. Second down and seven for the Warriors from their own 27. It is gonna be a handoff to Springer and Springer up to the 30, but no further. And that will bring on Cole Crossett and the punting unit. Yeah, seven yards is, is a tough, to, second and seven is, is tough to run on, um, especially with McMaster being uber aggressive and not really respecting the pass. Uh, sort of the opposite of a Waterloo where we have to respect the pass. So we're backpedaling a little bit so they can run on second down. And so those first down gains and the first down wins are gonna be huge for the Warriors going uh, into the wind. Little bit calmer right now. It settled a little bit. And a pretty decent punt into the wind. Now it holds up. Fumble. And it's off a man's hand. Yeah, Warriors and it's ball. recovered. The Warriors have it. Oh, no yards. I think there's a penalty down for no yards. It was recovered by Nate Mortensen, but I think it'll come back. Yeah, certainly from our vantage point, which is this, and that, that play happens right in front of us. It, Certainly look like the Warriors were inside the five yard. Yeah, it's tough when that ball hangs up and, and you're you're a gunner, so you're running down trying to make the tackle. You don't know how the ball is being hung up, so you're trying to backpedal and, and it was it was Sue Latmore was in the five yard halo, but he was making an effort to get out of the five yards. And I don't think he had a, any impact in that fumble. So that's probably what the referees are discussing right now. Officials discussing things now. He's pointing every which way here. Yeah. Let's hear what Kevin Mickleborough has. Uh, that's too, that's too bad for the for the Warriors. Uh, th those punts are going to be hard to handle because they're they're swirling up there, and once again, really hard to do on on the kick cover. Uh, but the Max Marauders now have the ball. First and 10 on the 50 yard line. Yeah, so it was a penalty against Mac. 10 yards for against a hold Mac, yeah. And 15, the 15 yard, no yards variety against Waterloo because the ball was in the air. So nets out to five yards for Mac and they'll start at the 50. Hall to throw. Hall has a man downfield. Priestner knocked away. Isaiah Blackson got his hand in there. I'll tell you what, that's textbook defensive back play. Uh, obviously he got beat off the line, which is not textbook, but when the receiver went up and made a high point of the catch, as soon as the ball hit his hands, Blackson put his, hit, put his hands on the ball and knocked it out. Uh, great play by Isaiah. So easy too to kind of make that contact early and get flagged, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. No, that was, uh, that was a nice looking, that was a great play by, by Keegan Hall too. Nice, great pass down the sideline, uh, but the Warriors uh, come out uh, on the good end of that one. Hall, 1,962 yards coming in. He is flushed out of the pocket. Miller is in pursuit, and Hall is going to turn the corner and get a first down. Outruns the warrior Marcus Miller. Yeah, King's not, not known for, for being a runner. He's more of a pocket guy, but uh, he turned on the Jets there and was able to get outside and, and smart play by getting those 10 yards. Looks like the McMaster Marauders are going to hurry up offense. Trying to maximize the, the time that they have the ball with the wind. Yeah, you want that ball in Keegan Hall's hands with the wind at his back as much as possible. Here he is on first down, looking to throw. 
Nobody open downfield. Hall still with it. Coverage is good, and now Hall has to just slide right at the line of scrimmage. Great closing, coverage. Yeah, closing in was Josh Pelegi. Yeah, we like to call that one a, a coverage sack. Um, where really, we, we were, uh, you know, I was watching the route combination, and the Warriors were getting getting to their zones really well there and, and covering it up, and, and Keegan being the veteran he is, understood there was nothing there and tried to make something happen. But at some point when you're playing quarterback running around, unless you're a talent as uh, a quarterback we used to have here, you got to know there's a clock coming out in your head and, and just get down if you can and, and live for another day. So smart play by Keegan. Yeah, the clock in the head of number five in black and gold for so many years ran on a different time yeah. than every other quarterback. Second and 10 here for the Marauders. Hall to throw again. Hall has a completed pass there out of the well, backfield. Well, it was Duchesne. Was down, yeah, it looked like his knee was down, but he is going to be short of the first down. That'll bring on the special teams unit. I imagine Horvat here will try a field goal. Yeah, Mack went back to the, the crossings that I've been talking about so far. Uh, but Warriors really locked it down nicely. And a couple of the, the McMaster Marauders uh, got caught up in the middle there. Uh, the back leaked out late. We always teach a running back, if, if you don't see anything, uh, if you're not helping with pass, bro, get out there and get into the route combination. And he did that. If that was a bit more accurate of a pass, he might have been able to turn for a first down. So Horvat to try from 47, which would be a long on the season. Plenty of leg, especially with this win. Horvat's kick is up and through a lot of distance on that one yeah that would have been good from 57 maybe all the way at the back of the end zone that ball finally found the way down to the ground so mcmaster ties it up here with 639 left in the half good stand there by the warriors though luke especially those two plays that ended that drive both great coverage downfield for the Warriors absolutely I'm I'm, uh, I'm loving the uh, the game plan right now by by uh, by game activists coordinator for the Warriors he's he's really mixing it up he's bringing the 30 front he's bringing the blitz he's dropping back in the zone and so uh, let's see if Keegan can start figuring out and coach Hopkins uh, from a master standpoint Warriors take, Warriors take the ball at the 35 handoff is to Springer and Springer makes a move Springer another big gainer 16 yards on first down. Yeah, the Warriors came out in a different look there. They went quads with all receivers instead of going heavy, giving the McMaster Marauders a, a, a thought that they might be passing it, but we ran an inside zone, and uh, Quinton made a great move at the line. Looks like the uh, Warriors are now going to hurry up, trying to catch uh, McMaster off guard. Another handoff to Springer, and Springer gains four and a half on first down, right past midfield into Mac territory. And this is going to be the key down here. Second and five. Second and, uh, yeah, five or four. Uh, I think there's some, some quick throws available, but also, also Quinton's been, been running the ball nice. And you got to think that over midfield, this might be, uh, might be three down territory. You know, Warriors have gone for it more on third down than any other team in the OUA. And so, you know, Coach Pretori likes to dial that up. Second down and five. Caban to throw off his back foot and it's complete. Evan Basiliga with a first down. Gain of about 12 on second down and five, so that'll move the sticks. Yeah, Mack went to uh, another zero blitz. And what I mean by zero blitz is there's no safety in the middle. They're bringing one extra blitzer than we can block. So a plus one blitz, so you, Nolan knows he's gonna get hit, stands in the pocket and throws a strike to Evan over the middle. New set of downs for the Warriors on the McMaster 43. Hand off to Springer, Quentin Springer. Springer turns a gain of maybe three into a gain of six with the second effort. Yeah, so far uh, looks like Coach is, is sticking to the same game plan either which way that we're going down the field right now. Um, that outside zone is really something Quinton does really well. And again, you, you run a bit uh, horizontal, and then as soon as you see that, uh, that, that slight opening, you put the foot in the ground and get, get upfield, and, and he does that really well. Four minutes to play now. Second down and four for the Warriors. 
It's gonna be Springer again, but this time he is taken down in the backfield. Big time play there by Mitch Price, the defensive lineman. And that's a loss of about three. So now it's third and seven. What do the Warriors do here? Yeah, it's kind of a no man's land here, but if we punt it, we might be able to get, you know, punt it out of bounds and, and really flip the field. Because you know that they're gonna be able to kick a 50 plus yard field goal. So if you don't get it here, all they need is, is 20 to 30 yards and, and then they got three points potentially on the board. So uh, I think this is a smart play kicking it away. Uh, seven yards is, is quite a bit um, at this stage. So gotta play the field position. Cross set just on his side of, on the Mac side, pardon me, of midfield. We'll get this punt away into the corner it goes and perfect. Go. Yeah, perfect kick. Bounds out of bounds at the 10. Exactly how you described it, Luke, and an excellent job by Crossette into the wind to bound that one out of bounds at the 10. We'll see what uh, McMaster is going to come out in here. Um, if uh, you know Coach Coach McNeil continues with our 30 front like we've been doing, if they're going to, um, you know, we're, we're kind of daring them to run the ball right now, and we'll see if uh, if Coach Hopkins wants to run or, or keep uh, you know that number one passer they got back there, number 16, and uh, slinging the ball around. On the 10 yard line. McMaster with 3.07 and counting to go here. We'll try to take the lead on this drive. Handoff is to Duchesne. Yeah, so they did come out in the heavy package, like we you know, just mentioned there, and, and, and Coach Hopkins wasn't afraid to, uh, to run the ball, but uh, great stand by the Warriors and putting them in the second and, uh, second and long. It's gonna be a long six, short seven here maybe. Past yep. the three minute stoppage. Yeah, we haven't seen Jackson Cooling, number two, get involved much. He's the kind of their veteran savvy guy. He's, he's been uh, been around for a long time and he's known to make some big catches. So we'll see if Keegan's gonna look to his number soon. He is on this near side with two other receivers to Hall's left. Second and six, Hall. He's gonna throw and it's complete to Aiden Nemeth, and Nemeth spins away from one tackle and is dropped at about the 35 yard line, a big gain on second down. Yeah, they're in a nice combination where they run a, a receiver to the flats and then just curl behind it. Every team has this play, and uh, there's a little bit of a miscommunication from the DBs for the Warriors as two jumped the flat, actually Jackson Cooling was the one running the flat, two jumped there, opened up that curl route to the field, and uh, you can't do that against a guy like Hall. He's gonna throw a strike. And maybe the Warriors DBs had the same thought you had with Jackson Cooling. Drew their attention and it was to Nemeth for the first down from the 35, first and 10. Hall to throw again. Hall will step up. Hall taken down hard by Keyshawn Bowen, a big hit from number two in black and gold. Right now, Waterloo's doing a great job getting to their drops. And what I mean by that is the linebackers are, are getting to their zones, their deep zones, and the DBs are, uh, are finding their receivers that are coming to the zone. But that's giving Keegan some space if he does want to run it. You know he doesn't want to run it. He wants to stand in there and throw a strike. So uh, good little cat and mouse game we got going on right now with uh, Waterloo defense. Yeah, coming into the game, Hall had run for 28, uh, 28 times, but only for 123 yards. And again, not much design run from the quarterback in this offense. And a whistle stops that play before it starts. Which is probably a good thing because McMaster had a pretty open receiver there. So we'll await this call. I think it's... Time count, maybe. Well, McMaster does a great job at from an offensive um, standpoint. Looks like it is a, is a time count violation. Yeah, oh, a time count violation. It's a loss of down. Is it so, a loss of down? That's interesting. Yeah, I guess. Uh, 
Looks like so McMaster oh. bring the punt unit on. And he's going to look to boom one here. Yeah, I think it's the option in the last two minutes to enforce the. Oh, oh it's partially oh, blocked. Hand on it. Punt is partially blocked. Oh, and then dropped by the Warriors, but pounced back on. So partially blocked. Ethan Miller came up and fielded it. And fortunate maybe to retain possession there. Yeah, that was a wild play. So what we're, we're saying from the, that time count, you're allowed to, to take the loss of down then. Yeah, it sounds like in the last two minutes of the core of the half, you can elect to take the distance of the penalty or the d loss of down. All right. So that's what the officials were talking to head coach Chris Bertoya about. Warriors back on the offensive here, but Springer taken down in the backfield once again. Yeah, we tried a, uh, we call that a, a guard tackle counter. So we're pulling two guys, but when you pull a tackle from the, from the weak side to the strong side, there leaves an opening and they brought that wheel linebacker screaming through that opening. I'm thinking the Warriors might go better back to our, our zone scheme where we're doing that outside zone without any pullers and give Quinton uh, Springer a little bit more opportunity to find his own hole. Uh, but now we're second and long into the win here. We'll see you at uh, Coach Conway dials up. Anthony Sistanovic with that big time tackle, a loss of three, second and 13. Caban to throw. Now Caban has to protect the ball. It was out. And Caban still has the football. But it's another loss of yardage for the Warriors. A big sack there as Caban was tracked down from behind and it's quickly third down and 15 for Waterloo. Yeah, this is a, this is a huge punt for Waterloo because uh, as we were mentioning, uh, their kicker's got a, a, a big kick. So if, if they don't get a hold of this one, it could be uh, you know given up three before the half potentially. So there's one minute and 11 seconds left and we'll see if we can hold them. I think McMaster took their last time out there This has been flying by. It's been a quick half of football. 10 points for each team with the wind at their backs. Game is not even an hour old yet and we're approaching halftime. McMaster will get the chance here to take their first lead of the evening with the wind at their back. Dependent here on the cross at punt. Cross set. Pretty good punt into the wind. Fielded by Reed. And Reed has some momentum and he's finally taken down up near midfield. All right, so we got 57 seconds left. We got the number one, number two passing attack in Canada with the ball. Let's see if the Warriors play a little bit softer here and, and be okay with giving up a, a potential field goal opportunity or they try to get aggressive and bring the blitz. Uh, it's going to be interesting what uh, which K Mac dials up. Fifty-seven seconds left. Let's see how aggressive the Warriors are with Keegan Hall. There's, Hall. there's the crosser. The crosser, but the Warriors do play it a little soft and take Jackson Taylor down after a gain of only about four and a half. Yeah, I think that's the way to play it. And uh, it looks like they're going to hurry up. And we'll see if uh, the Warriors can continue uh, with, their, with their great coverage that they have going on right now. Second down and five. Hall to throw. Little dump off to Duchesne. And Duchesne's going to have enough for the first down right at the sticks. And Keyshawn Bowen doesn't think they got enough, but they did. Yeah, Keegan was looking to throw a, a, a short side goal route, but we had it covered really well, so they, they just hit the running back out of the backfield. Smart play by Duchesne. First down for the Marauders. Passes caught on the far side, the field side, and a gain of about seven. Pass was complete to Everett Reed. 
22 catches on the year coming in. 30 seconds, 31 seconds now as the clock starts up again. Second and four, Hall the throw again. Keegan Hall the throw, it's caught again by Reed. And Reed riled out of bounds, but past the sticks. And another first down for McMaster. That was, a, that was a good route combination. They went three receivers to the boundary and they ran the, the outside two receivers uh, on goal routes and they gave the option for number three to go in or out. You could tell because he was slow playing it. He read the defense, went out, uh, threw it on time, got out of bounds. That was a smart play by Mack. Now we got 23 seconds left. Lots of time for McMaster here. 23 seconds to try to get another first down here and take a shot if they want. Well within Horvat's field goal range now with the wind at their backs. Hall, pressure comes. Dumped it off there to Duchesne. Duchesne with a head of steam inside the 20 down to the 16 yard line. Yeah, Michael Duchesne out of the backfield's been a weapon. Absolutely, you gotta think that uh, they're gonna start taking a shot to the end zone here soon. Uh, they probably got one more play where they can throw it in bounds. 14 seconds and counting. Hall is just going to throw this one away. Didn't like what he saw, so that'll bring it down to six seconds and likely not enough to yeah, take you, another shot. Usually you want about eight to ten seconds to actually run a play. Six seconds is not enough. So it looks like Coach Patasic's picking a smart move and, and taking those three points or, 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 or looking to take those three points, rather. Uh, good stand by the Warriors. I mean, that was a hard position to be in. Under a minute left, like I said, McMaster's in their wheelhouse uh, passing the ball down the field, but you know they, uh, yeah, they played soft and, and gave some underneath stuff, which is fine, and looking to get out of here uh, potentially down by only three. Horvat will try from 24 to give McMaster the lead. Kick is up, and kick is through. Warriors should just take the ball here and uh, and just take a quick knee and head into uh, head into the locker room feeling pretty good. You know, it's 13-10. They came out flying. Quentin Springer's running the ball real well. The old line's getting a nice big push. Uh, it's going to be a game of field position and it's going to be a game of uh, you know turnovers. Adam, it, the first team to make that big mistake is it's, it's going to go you know one way or the other. Just like we saw in the Ottawa game, where it really turned the tide in the second half, where we had a a, a fumble six and. And uh, we'll have to see who's going to play mistake-free football in that second half. Yeah, the turnover game yet to be played tonight. Warriors thought they had one there on the muffed punt, but the penalty took it off the board. And McMaster, with 13 points here in the second quarter, take a three-point advantage into halftime. You won't want to miss the second half of this one. We'll be back with it after this.
where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. We're looking forward to a great evening. It's a chance to obviously celebrate all the successes from this last year. We're really here and the work we do is on behalf of the student athletes and their coaches. So a special shout out to the uh, student athletes and the coaches in the room today. She helped lead her team to the Quigley Cup title. The 23-24 OUA Athlete of the Year is Brock Badger's volleyball standout, Sarah Roy. He was first team OUA All-Star, the 23-24 OUA Athlete of the Year from the Guelph Griffins, Max Davis. Sport has changed society. Sport does reproduce the dominant values in society, but that means if we get it right, then we become part of that. And so a good message tonight is a big thank you to our OUA staff who was charged with dealing with the biggest conference in the country to make it work. To my colleagues I've worked with in this room my whole time while at U Ottawa, thank you. It has been my pleasure to meet you to learn from every single one of you, to get to know you, to share some good laughs together, and probably some tears too, through tough moments that we've all supported one another. Congratulations to the 2023-24 J.P. Lucemore Award recipient, Carleton University's Jennifer Brennan. I've been working in this industry for 36 years. Uh, it's been an incredible career. I've been so blessed and fortunate to work with so many great people, uh, those that look out for, for me, those that welcomed me, and those that have supported me. Thank uh, the OUA staff and Gord for this uh, incredible, incredible honor. It's a real pleasure to look back on everything that the folks in this room uh, have accomplished uh, here tonight over the course of the 23-24 OUA season uh, and it's really exciting to look forward. We've got some time off now but we get to do it all again uh, for the 24-25 season. I belong. 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 Saying I belong carries significance. It goes beyond individual or team performance broader social context of the representation within sport. Saying I belong conveys a powerful message. A message of empowerment, resilience, and the breaking of barriers. Signifies determination to overcome obstacles. And succeed in an environment that may not always be inclusive. Or representative of diverse backgrounds. Saying I belong asserts the right to be recognized, respected, and valued. It hides a desire to challenge stereotypes and to promote diversity. It inspire others from similar backgrounds to pursue their dreams in sport while feeling supported. Saying I belong can also serve as a reminder to the sports community. A reminder of the importance of inclusivity, equal opportunity. And create an environment that celebrates and embraces diversity. It can pave the way for greater representation. And contributes to positive change in the industry. Saying I belong is a powerful affirmation. That everyone has a rightful place in the sport. This is what girls do. 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 This is this 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 is what girls this is what girls this 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 is what girls this is what girls this is what this is what girls do.
Nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. An idea like turning a soccer player into a cyclist, or a goalie into a rower, or a kid who could run into one who can jump, throw, hurdle, vault, and run. RBC Training Ground finds and funds young Canadian athletes with Olympic potential. And their time has come. exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. Looking forward to a great evening. It's a chance to obviously celebrate all the successes from this last year. We're really here and the work we do is on behalf of the student athletes and their coaches. So a special shout out to the uh, student athletes and the coaches in the room today. She helped lead her team to the Quigley Cup title. The 23-24 OUA Athlete of the Year is Brock Badger's volleyball standout, Sarah Roy. He was first team OUA All-Star, the 23-24. Welcome back to Warrior Field on the north campus of the University of Waterloo. After one half of football, the McMaster Marauders lead the Waterloo Warriors 13-10. Adam McGuire and Luke Balch with you in. Luke, uh, tail of two quarters there as the wind blew, so did the offenses, and McMaster 
behind Keegan Hall has a three point lead. And it's been a pretty big disparity between how the two teams have attacked things offensively. It's been all in the air for McMaster and all on the ground for the Warriors. Yeah, Keegan Hall's uh, first half stats, he's, he's 14 for 20 for 129 yards, uh, whereas Nolan Caban is, is two for four. Um, you know, Quinn Springer has those 14 carries. Um, but one of the things that uh, a big disparity here is, is time of possession that Adam and I were just talking about off air there. They, Mack almost had the ball for 19 minutes uh, versus 11 for Waterloo. And so we're going to need to sustain some drives, and we're going to need to get some first downs. Uh, and, and, and Nolan might have to make some plays for us in order to, uh, to win this ball game. Uh, but as we talked about off the top of the broadcast, Adam, are we going to see the Warriors come out in the third quarter and, and make a difference? In, in the last few games, we've, we've gotten beaten that third quarter and uh, unable to come back in the fourth. So this is going to be big. Looks like the, the Marauders are going to receive the ball, whereas I believe the Warriors deferred, and, and, and I've, I believe they're going to be taking the win in the fourth quarter, which is a, a, a a great, uh, a great decision, in my opinion, by Coach Pertoya. You are giving the Marauders the ball at the start of both halves, but that's okay. Uh, it's more important to be able to to uh, throw the ball, especially if you're you're behind in the fourth. So, giving McMaster Marauders uh, the ball right away with the wind, it's going to be important that uh, the the Warriors really weather the storm here, and uh, and we'll see what this this great second half football is is, is going to come in store for us on this Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, Friday night lights. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and, you know, head coach Chris Bertoya has talked uh, about this in the past with how he plays the win. It's not even just so much that it's the fourth quarter and it's crunch time, but it's the longer quarter, right? With the timing rules of the fourth quarter, it's very possible that more net plays are run in that fourth quarter than in the third. So it's a great point. Warriors are going to have the wind in the fourth. They're going to kick the ball away here to start off the third quarter little bit more on the stat sheet here after the first half we were talking again off air Luke not just the time of possession but the total plays Waterloo has only run 19 offensive plays for 144 yards 36 plays run by the Marauders for 213 and McMaster will add to that count here as we start the third quarter 13 10 the McMaster Marauders lead the Waterloo Warriors Shields and Ward back to try to receive this kick. What a short kick. Short kick, caught in the wind, it bounces, and it's picked up there by Ward. And Ward's taken down right around the 31-yard line. So all told into the wind, pretty decent field position here for the Warriors as they kicked it into that strong breeze. Yeah, as we start the second half here, I want to take a second and, uh, and say hi to my, my six-year-old son, Carter, and uh, tell him it's about time to go to bed. And I'll let him know who wins the game. He's a huge Warriors fan and just got a text from a wife and said, you know, he wants to watch the whole thing. So we'll tell you who wins, Carter. Uh, and uh, here we go. We'll see what the Warriors defense comes out. Looks like they're doing that 30 front again as they uh, anticipate passing uh, passing downs here by Keegan. First down and 10. Come on, Dad. It's a tight game. Like, ah, shoot. It's a long weekend. Pass is received there by Duchesne and taken down by a pair of Warriors. The first one there is Rasheem Blackson. Yeah, the, the flats are open uh, right now because the Warriors are getting deep drops, anticipating those those deep in routes. And so uh, they're doing a great job. Max doing a great job uh, of getting their backs out in, into the flats and, and Keegan finding them. And uh, Warriors came up and, and rallied there. Great tackle, put him in second along. Yeah, no gain on that first down pass to Duchesne. Second and 10. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. Great play by Marcus Miller, who sent the ball right back to Keegan Hall. So with the wind at their backs, a quick two and out here for the Marauders and the Warriors. The decision to kick off in both halves doesn't hurt them at all. That uh, was a huge stand out the gate. As we said, uh, the third quarters have been trouble. So. Let's see if the Warriors can put together a drive here to, to uh, flip the field position once again. Horvat, a, a huge punt. All the way back to the Waterloo 20, Logan Haru with it. Haru, near sideline and is taken out of bounds at the 41. A good return from Haru and a good punt, but 
Maybe a little too good. Out kicked the coverage a bit there, did Horvat. That was, our, I think, our first look. Luke had a punt with the wind at the back of the punter. Yeah, he got a hold of that one. Got a, uh, what you want to do if you're a punter, you want to get the ball to go end over, uh, flip, right? So it goes up and then comes back down in that spiral look, which he got. Um, and so great kick, great job by Haru to make up some of that ground. And uh, Warriors are coming out right now in that big package that they started the game with. Into the win, the Warriors on their first drive of the half. Handoff is to Springer, a little bit of a counter. And Springer met by Aaron Lavers. That was a great stick by Lavers. Really filled the, filled the hole in there. What they try to do is run a, uh, a slice play, so they're bringing uh, Evan Basiliga back to the weak side and uh, Springer falling him through the hole, but uh, great fill by the linebacker. Now we got second and long. We'll see if they let, uh, let Nolan try to make the first down here with his arm. Yeah, second and eight for the Warriors. At the 43 yard line of Waterloo. Caban's gonna hand it off to Springer and Springer has the first down over the 50 to the 52 yard line. And a big gain on second down and long for the running back Springer who's already up over the century mark in the first half. You know, the Warriors motion to quads, quads meaning four receivers to the field side, really given that pass look and then just came with the simple inside zone and let Quinton Springer uh, do his thing up the middle, and that was a huge first down for the Warriors. That'll bring Springer's total to 128 on the day. Just at the start of the third quarter here. Caban to throw, Caban completed to Basiliga. Evan Basiliga has some room all the way down inside the 35 to the 31 yard line. Basiliga on first down. A big gainer for the Warriors. Yeah, what I liked on that play, Adam, that was a great quick decision by Nolan. He saw the blitz, he recognized, and he knew who his hot read was. Meaning Evan's gonna turn around right away, he's gonna hit him, and if it's man-to-man -man defense and you can get past your guy, there's a lot of space. Good catch and run. Caban, who came in a few weeks ago for the injured Nick Orr. Caban to throw again, doesn't a lot see of anybody oh. he likes, and now, is taken down, he's buried. Big time play by Malik Bolt. That's his fifth tackle for a loss on the season, his sack total up to three and a half yeah, now. If, if Bolt didn't make that tackle, there was a ton of green grass for Nolan to run. We know he's not the scrambling type that Nick Orr was when he was back there, but he can use his legs. He would have definitely gotten the first down, so a huge play by the McMaster defense, now putting the Warriors into second and long against the win here. Yeah, second and 15 to be exact. How do the Warriors play this one? Caban to throw, pressure comes again. Got it away to Springer on a screen. Springer, still on his feet, Springer. Down to the 23 yard line, maybe the 24, and now decision time for the Warriors. Yeah, I think this is field goal range, even though there is a stiff wind. Um, I, I would anticipate Coach Pretoria kicking this, but we will see what he does. Looks it's, like, yeah, it's only look, third yeah, and about it, two. It's closer than I thought there, Adam. So uh, definitely available to run the ball. You know, Quinton's been getting two to three yards every time. And so huge play here. Nobody scored uh, against the wind yet. Warriors are 20 for 40 on the season in third down conversion. The next highest, Guelph, at 24 attempts. So, third down and two. Springer has it to the 20 yard line. Maybe first this. Down. Yeah, it's a first down. He got about a half or three quarters of a yard more than he needed, and Quentin Springer converts it. New set it down for the Warriors. They're really relying on, on Quinton right now, even in the past game there, and that screen pass to the, uh, you know, he did a great job staying patient, following his old line in there. He just put his head down, knew what he needed to get, and he got that. You know, first and 10 Warriors creeping up into the red zone. Good drive here by Waterloo to answer into the wind. Springer with it again. Springer has a hole again. Quinton Springer cuts Touchdown. to the end zone. Touchdown, Warriors. Have a night, 34. 
Quinton Springer into the end zone. That's just a great, that's just a great run play. They, they went back to their zone scheme as I was talking about before where it looks like Quinton's a little bit more comfortable running that zone scheme where he can just find the hole himself and he's not following a puller. And what I really love there is the safety. It was Quinton versus the safety one-on-one -on -one to tackle him. He gave him a little shake. Safety just almost fell over. Quinton into the end zone for a touchdown. Warriors about to take the lead. The first points we've seen into the wind as the extra point is up and through. And Waterloo back on top, 17 to 13, as back and forth we go. You know, Adam, we talked about at the top of the broadcast, the Warriors being able to play free and, and not feel tight. I feel like that York game, they felt we have to win this, you know. And now they're just saying, let's just go out and play football. Let's run downhill as an offense. Let's make some plays and fly around as a defense. And that's what they're doing. Now, you know, we know that McMaster has a quick strike capability, and we know they're going to be able to get the ball down the field through the air. Uh, but nine minutes left. If the Warriors can continue to chew clock as they're going into the wind every time they get the ball, it's going to be huge for the chances to pull off this upset. Yeah, we've seen the Warriors all season. You know, Luke, you and I have both seen versions of this team that have struggled, but this one, you know, trying to put the hyperbole and the homerism aside doesn't look like a winless football team and they haven't played like one even though they don't have a win yet and maybe you know as you said that York game the, some of the toughest games to win are the ones that you're supposed to win and the Warriors maybe felt some of that pressure last week and this week a little more unencumbered to play the game that they'd like to play from a Saturday to Saturday basis. Yeah, we were talking this week on the, the Warriors podcast, shout out to the Waterloo Warriors armchair quarterback here podcast, and about them coming out in the third quarter. And uh, and they really did this week, and, and let's see if they can continue it going. Kickoff is to Shields. And taken down at about the 36-yard line. After McMaster's, the kickoff from Crossette. Yeah, McMaster's offense has had success running uh, two things. One is, is obviously the crossing game that they like, but we've been cramping down on that. What they've been finding good a good rhythm with is uh, that 10 to 12 yard curl route um, in the middle of our zone. And we'll see if they look to continue that. Uh, that in the back leaking out of the backfield. But right now they're going to the six wide, just letting their quarterback go out there and, and, uh, and find the open receiver. Not a bad strategy. You've got Keegan Hall slinging the rock and there's that play we just talked about uh, we're playing a bit of a soft zone which is okay because we don't want to get beat over the top but that means that those those hitch routes those six yard hitches and those 12 yard curls are going to be open and you just have to throw them on time and that's what keegan hall is great at is, is hitting that receiver when his foot goes in the ground and if you do that it's impossible to defend especially if you're playing zone yeah it was a gain of seven for jackson cooling the veteran receiver out of burlington Second down and four here. Another thing that the McMaster Marauders offense has is, is, is not just one target that they throw to. They really spread the, spread the ball around well. They've been doing it all season. So you can't really tune in on the one receiver. Hall on second down will throw it, and it's caught. Breaking down the far side. Priestner in a foot race. Touchdown, McMaster. Yeah, that was, the, that was the play that we talked about. You know, they threw it on time, threw a hitch route. Uh, we brought the blitz, so it was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and if you miss the tackle, there's nobody back there. Uh, that's, an, that, that's an unfortunate one, and really, you know, McMaster trying to switch that momentum. Looks like they take the lead back from the Warriors. Priestner broke one tackle, and he was gone down the far sideline. His second touchdown of the season, and just like that, McMaster, they regain the lead. Yeah, Priestner's been playing really well today. Uh, he's been getting open, and uh, you can see he's got those uh, those wheels to turn on if, if he has an opportunity. So really got to see if the Warriors can respond after that, uh, that big play by McMaster. Bit of a problem on the snap, but again, just like we saw the Warriors after their first touchdown, the hold got down, and Horvat chips it through. So all it took was one quick series to get the Marauders back in front here with 8.07 left in the third. 
And now the time of this third quarter becomes important here, Luke, because if the Warriors can piece together a long drive here and some good time of possession, they keep the ball out of McMaster's hands with the wind behind them. Yeah, that was a that was a big quick strike, and that's not what the Warriors wanted. They wanted, if McMaster did score, to take their time to score. Again, playing this uh, field position battle. And so that was a huge play. You could tell that uh, offensive coordinator Chris Hopkins was, was just saying, Keegan, let's go. It's your time to shine. I want you to, to win this game for us and, uh, and put it on your shoulders. And they went six wide there uh, and, and just let them find the open receiver. And so we expect more of that uh, coming into that third, especially th for the rest of the third quarter. So let's see if the Waterloo Warriors can respond. Yeah, and we don't mean to belabor the point about the win, but it's, it's the dominant factor here. And the other thing, you know, we talked about, Luke, was... McMaster's play calling certainly changed when they got the win at their back. They kind of they didn't abandon the run, but they stopped running the ball as that one is pounded through the end zone for a single over the head of Nick Morgado. That's a pretty big single, too. That takes it from a three-point game to a four-point game. Now, there's a lot of time left, so a lot of other opportunities for potentially other sing uh, uh, singles as well. But um, as a returner, you got to anticipate that and, and come into it and, and try to try to bring that out of the end zone. But ultimately, decent field position because of that play. And we'll see if uh, Waterloo can, at worst, get a couple first downs and kill some clock and, and, and pin them deep. And at best, score another touchdown. Here we go. Warriors back on offense. First and 10. So resetting the clock, there was an issue with the clock. 21-17 McMaster leads after the single. Handoff is to Springer. Springer bounces to the outside and Springer hauled down and pushed to the ground. A good tackle there. I think Carter Blad, the first one there, 24, got a hand on it. Yeah, that was a... Uh that was not an outside zone, so you so when you're not running outside zone, you don't want to see uh, running east-west. You want to get get downhill as quick as possible. But unfortunately, they plugged up the hole. He had to kick it outside, and, and great pursuit by the McMaster defense. We'll see if uh, Nolan can make another play here on on second down. Wind picks up once again here. Second and ten from the 35. Caban to throw. Caban's going to go deep. Has Basiliga. Oh, that's a flag. Basiliga tugged on, and pass interference will be called. Braxton Peters, and maybe again a play like we saw in the first half, Luke, where the Warriors were guilty. Basiliga might have been behind Peters there, if not for the tug. Yeah, that was a great throw by Nolan. That's a tough throw going to the wide side. We ran a corner route concept. We were anticipating man, and we got man, which is a great coverage to be in if you're calling a field side corner all you got to do is win on the route uh, no uh, that was a great ball by Nolan and a good route by Basiliga uh, got the first down by the tug by the DB which as you mentioned probably a smart play at the end of the day so that'll convert the first down because of the penalty and the Warriors at their own 50 Warriors are coming back out in their heavy package with the extra alignment on the field Handoff is to Springer. Springer has another hole and a good gain on first down of about six and a half. Yeah, that's been one of their favorite plays. It's, it's just an inside zone. And what I mean by inside zone is uh, old linemen are just pushing downfield, looking to climb up to the second level. McMaster's running 5D linemen. When you run 5D linemen, all you need is one crease and there's not as many linebackers in play there. So uh, Quinton keeps seeing the hole and he's hitting it full speed right now and, uh, and moving the pile. It's really good. Second down and four for the Warriors, just over the midfield stripe. Hand off to Springer. Springer gets close to a first down, about a yard short, so the Warriors, you'd have to figure, will go for it here. Yep, that does the same play as before. Um, again, giving Quinton a, a two-way go, front side or back side. Warriors going heavy here. It might be quarterback sneak territory, but lately they've been giving it to Springer up the middle, and, and he's been churning the feet, so we'll see what they come out with. But a big play here. Very big play with six minutes and counting left in the third quarter. Third down and one. Caban will be under center. He's going to go ahead himself. And yep. it looks like he's got it. 
That's a good play call. Uh, quarterback sneaks uh, on third and one in the CFL. We mentioned already this game are very hard to stop. Uh, so not in the CFL in the Canadian football. And so uh, moving the chains once again, turning up the clock, five minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, Caban at 6-2 certainly has some reach to fall forward and push the ball ahead. He did there. So it's first down and 10 for the Warriors. Bit of a high snap, but it's taken and handed off to Springer. And Springer gains about two before he's stood up in the hole there. Nick Garcia might have been in on that tackle, I believe. Yeah, if Garcia did not make that play, Quinton was gone. So great stick coming off. Um, coming off and, uh, yeah, meeting him in the hole. Yeah, it might have been Dominic Lemani, in fact. 98, yeah, not yeah, 90, yeah. yeah. A great play by Lemani to make it second down and eight for the Warriors. Caban to throw again. Has Basiliga. I think that's. Oh, uh, yeah, that's. No, uh, that's Hogel, Hogel yeah. down there on the far side. 84, not 87. Looks like first down, Warriors. And yeah, just enough for a first down right at the sticks. So that'll move the chains once more for Waterloo. A good throw on second and long from Caban to the wide side. Yeah, what the, this, this dominant run game is doing is allowing. Nolan to just play one-on-one -on -one football to the outside when we're throwing the ball as as Mac is committed to the stopping the run and going man-to-man -man defense and just playing one-on-one -on -one football on the outside. Little handoff to Springer. Springer jumps through again. Quinton Springer, another big gainer. Down to the 26-yard line, another first down for Quinton Springer, who is having a career night here under the lights at Warrior Field. He sure is. I talked to Chris Pretoria before the game, and, and, and Coach Pretoria was super excited to see what Quinton had, had in store. And he said, uh, as I was leaving his office, he said, you just watched. He might have 200 in him tonight. And you know what, Adam? We might just get there. Yeah, we'll get the stats after three quarters, but he's got to be closing in on it now. Springer again bounces off of a tackle and turns ahead for two or three on first down. And again, all the way down, the clock ticks with 3.08 and counting until the Warriors have the wind at their back once again. And perhaps more importantly, the way we should phrase it, Lucas, Keegan Hall, yeah, yeah, Ke exactly. Keegan Hall will have the wind in his face. Uh, I think the uh, game plan will be similar for the Warriors, which way they're going, but uh, yeah, it, it more on the flip side is going to be a lot more, uh, lot big, more of a difference maker on the other side of the ball. 21-17, Mac leads. Waterloo driving. Second and eight from the 24 of McMaster. Caban to throw. Caban has Springer out of the backfield. And Springer takes a lick, but he gets the first down. So catching the ball out of the backfield, Springer moves the sticks once again for the Warriors. Yeah, Springer, he's a, a former MVP of the, uh, the league here. Uh, coming out of the powerhouse, Jacob Haspler. And so uh, when Chris Batoya, you know, signed him last last year, it was his freshman year, we were really excited about what he could bring to the table. Playing second fiddle to Anthony Miller, uh, and rightfully so, Anthony deserved that, but he's really coming out to, to play this game. Yeah, and, you know, that Jacob Hessler pipeline runs pretty deep down to Hamilton as well. Lots of grads find their way into the Marauders too. So Springer, the Hessler grad on first down, gains about two and a half or three. Now here's an interesting play call coming up for Coach Conway in the offense. Do you want to throw the ball and put it in uh, Caban's hands? Do you want to give uh, give Springer another look and potentially go for it on third down if you can get some more yardage? Yeah, Warriors can get a first down without a touchdown. Second down and seven from the nine. First down marker right at around the two-yard line. Another second and long here for the Warriors. Caban is going to throw. He's going to go to the He's end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. And it's a touchdown. Brett Timbeck. Touchdown, Warriors. Another great response by the Waterloo Warrior offense. Good play pot calling by Coach Conway. Run, 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 run. Set up the pass. No one throws the wide side hitch route, which is tough. Going into the wind here. Threw it on time. Great catch by Timbeck. 
Warriors take the lead. We got ourselves a great ball game here. And the Warriors take the lead right back with the extra point pending. Extra point up and through from Crossett. And Waterloo regains the lead. They've hit 24 points here before we hit the fourth quarter. And coming into the game, averaging just 18.2 a game for the Warriors. So they have been able to finish those drives that they've been able to start. We've talked about that off the top, Luke. We did see in that first quarter, they had a long drive that was snuffed out short field goal attempt that was through from Crossette, but since then the Warriors have made good on their trips inside the red zone. Yeah, I've been very impressed with, with how the Warriors have stayed true to their game plan. As they come out of the half, you know, they were thinking about, you know, do we want to tweak what we're doing? Do we want to do something different? And, and Coach Bertoia and staff said, no, let's just keep going. Let's keep running the rock. And they've been doing that successfully. And again, only 88 seconds until the wind flips. You know that the Marauders and Keegan Hall will try to make some hay with this last possession of the third quarter. Yeah, I expect them to take a couple shots actually before the, before the uh, the end of the quarter. So the Warriors got to be on uh, on alert for that. High kick. Oh, that could be in play. And could, oh. oh, it bounds out of bounds, so the flags will fly. I didn't mind that. It wasn't a true onside kick, but there was a potential for it to bounce our way. Uh, I don't mind that play by, by the special teams coordinator, um, Coach Erdman. Yeah, it, going into this howling wind, I mean, the ball's gonna get caught up there regardless. Spotted at the 40. The last two kickoffs we've seen into the wind by Crossette. Uh, the Marauders have returned in and around the 35-yard line both times, so really uh, not much of a risk. They really only gave up about five yards on the kind of quasi-onside attempt as the handoff is to Duchesne, and he is taken down after a gain of three and a half or four. Yeah, great play by Justin Geck in the middle. He's playing nose tackle in a 30 front. What that means is you're getting double teamed every play. And Justin Geck was taking on the double there, and he fought through and, and uh, came off onto the running back. Awesome play by him. Now it's a big third down here. I don't think Coach K-Mac's gonna bring the blitz. I think he's gonna sit back, and hopefully they can tackle him before the sticks. It's gonna be second and seven. Under a minute to go here, third quarter. Hall will throw in the little screen, but it's blown up by the Warriors. Caught by Aiden Nemeth but Isaiah Blackson was right there to take him down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know what, I, I it looks like McMaster thought the same thing I did where we're gonna be playing a high zone so we can throw underneath potentially to the wide receiver screen. Surprised by that play call a little bit as we've, they've been so successful throwing it over uh, in those, those, those curl routes, those hitch routes as I was mentioning before, uh, but awesome play by the Warriors. Now we're getting the ball back here. Horvat to try to lean into a punt, bit of it. Sketchy one off the side of his foot, but it's taken there off of a bounce. And Haru is hit at the 31-yard line. You know what, I think both teams, uh, special teams-wise, have been playing really well this game and been playing a clean game. We've seen a lot of Waterloo Warrior games where uh, a lot of penalties that are pushing them back after returns. Uh, the flags have been uh, in the pocket so far from the stripes, and, and that just means that both teams are playing well and playing clean and playing disciplined football. It's been a great game. Yeah, the discipline certainly higher than we've seen in games past. And obviously, a couple of those penalties, Luke, we talked about really the desperation touchdown savers on those exactly long passes, the pass interference calls. A springer on first down makes a little jump cut. And at the buzzer of the third quarter, gains about a yard and a half or two. So the Warriors will take a three-point lead into the fourth quarter. High drama on the final home game of the season. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You won't want to miss it in 90 seconds.
Welcome back to Warrior Field. For the fourth quarter of action, Adam McGuire and Luke Balch with you. The Warriors lead 24-21. Second down and 10 here for Waterloo. As Quinton Springer after three quarters, 177 yards on 26 carries on the ground. Caban now seven of nine for 103 yards and a touchdown. Second down and 10, Caban. Rolls out, didn't like the look. Now Caban, Webster, it's too high for him. And Caban with Webster coming back to the ball. Got it up into that wind a little too high and it sails into the max sideline. Yeah, Waterloo ran uh, what we call the, the vertical concept. So they ran uh, uh, Evan Basilega across the field to pull the safety. And they, they ran a, a, a seam route and a post over the top. And I think they did have an opportunity to make that throw, but Nolan got a little antsy in the pocket, left a little early, and uh, unable to make that, uh, that play. Let's see if uh, Cole, Cole Crissette can get a hold of this one. His first punt with the wind at his back. Oh, he fumbled it too. Yeah, a bit of a tough one with the snap, but he got it away. A good punt, Everett Reed. On the return, Reed. Up to the Waterloo 45 yard line. I thought I was gonna announce or jinx that after I was talking highly of the special teams <laughs> when he started uh, fumbling the punt and almost had a good return. But uh, let's see how, how uh, you know, McMaster Marauders, Coach Potasic, come out here on offense. If, if they're gonna stay true to who they are and, and slinging the ball around, or they're gonna try to go and pound the rock down the field. Yeah, just the last note on that punt, the timing has been good. It's a new long snapper, Cole Waddell out with an injury. It's Eugene Park for the Warriors, but really the long snapping hasn't missed a beat so far. For the Warriors, Hall now and the Marauders back into the win. A little delayed handoff to Duchesne. And Duchesne, a good gain on first, get first down, about eight yards. Yeah, we stayed in our, our 30 front that we've been playing all game, and I think it's been pretty successful, so I don't mind staying in it. And that is a little bit more susceptible to the run, especially if the linebackers are getting some drops. But we talked about the strength of this Warriors defense is their linebacking core, so bringing four linebackers on the field instead of three, in my opinion, is definitely okay. Going to say a gain of seven on first down for Duchesne. Second down and three. Hall, another handoff to Duchesne, and that'll be enough for a first down up over midfield. As two runs for the Marauders into the teeth of the wind here. Yeah, Warriors gotta stay alert though, because we know that uh, this is not what McMaster really wants to do. They really do want to throw it. And uh, so we gotta, you know, that's okay giving up a few yards on the ground as long as we're not getting beat over the top. Mack with 87 rushing yards and 203 through the air through three quarters. For the Warriors, only 103 through the air, but almost 200, 179 on the ground. This pass from Hall is complete. Caught there by Priestner, who's had a big night. Only a gain of three, though. Yeah, that was an inside wide receiver screen. That play would have been super effective if Waterloo did bring the blitz as they have been in the past, but they sat back in zone, which makes it a little bit harder. So great play called by Coach McNeil. Looks like it's second and medium here. Let's see what the Warriors come out with. Right at the Waterloo 50. Second down and seven. Three receivers to the left of Hall, two to his right. Hall looks, will go downfield, and it is. We're gonna say caught. It is caught. The ball looked like it bobbled a bit, but a diving catch from Jackson Cooling, and now the officials behind the play. There's a Warrior down. Yeah, that was a just an absolute great throw and an absolute great catch by by Jackson Cooling. As we mentioned, he's the veteran receiver on this core. Um, you, you would see McMaster on the broadcast, the receivers will run up to the line and pause, and then they'll backpedal. We call that a double cadence. And they've been using that a lot in the second half, and what that tells Keegan Hall as a veteran quarterback is what does he think the coverage is gonna be? As the receivers run to the line at the start, the DBs will backpedal, and they'll either look at the receiver showing man or get to their zone show, showing zone. And so Keegan did a double cadence there. He knew that it was gonna be zone, so he threw uh, that, that corner route threw him nicely to the sticks. Uh, great diving catch. Now they are in uh, plus territory. 
and we'll see what they can do uh, moving into the red zone. Meanwhile, there's a warrior down. Haven't been able to see who that is. Uh, oh, it's Justin Gack, yeah, I was 97, say, I Gack, yeah. yeah. We couldn't see from the booth here. Gek is back up on his feet. Meanwhile, Keegan Hall with a perfect throw into the wind and cooling. You know, initially we didn't know if it was gonna be called complete or not. The ball did look like it rolled around a little bit, but cooling's hands underneath of it. Yeah, from our vantage point up here, we had a good look at it. I do think it, it was indeed a catch. Yeah, I think you're right, a catch and First down for the Marauders here from the 24 of the Warriors. Hall to throw it again. And this time, incomplete, intended for Jackson Taylor. I think it was Keyshawn Bowen in the backfield that got his hands up and maybe diverted the path of a throw from Hall. Yeah, usually uh, McMaster's is on point with those quick little hitch routes. Uh, both good coverage and Keyshawn Bowen disrupting the passing lane. So great stand on first down. Second and 10. 24 yard line, Waterloo has a three point lead. We've gone back and forth the entire second half. Three lead changes. Hall now in trouble and he's taken down. Marcus Miller pulls down Hall for a sack and a loss of two yards. That was an awesome sack. McMaster had a play to the field side, but Keegan Hall came off of it. They leaked the back to the, to the field, and, and he was open originally. But uh, Keegan came off of it, brought the ball down in, in a big sack by the Warrior defense. So this will bring on a field goal attempt from Horvat into the wind. This is our first look at a field goal attempt other than an extra point into this breeze. Looks it's like it's from, died down a little bit here. It has died down for sure. It's from 33 yards. Kick oh. is up and kick is good. Almost got a almost got a hand on that up the middle too. Yeah, and the kick did definitely move from Horvat's right to left, but he curled it inside the upright. The wind is definitely in the face of Horvath, but kind of kitty corner, not directly right to left on your TV screen, but kind of from the near side goal post to the far side corner. Well, the Warriors are uh, in, the, in the Canadian football rules for those who watch a lot of NFL, you have an option after a field goal to, to take the ball at the 35 or take a kickoff. Warriors decide to take the ball, which is a smart play. Springer. Yeah, the with the kick, a kickoff into the wind, you think that that's you know, benefit to the receiving team, but we've seen a couple of times here, those kind of short kicks there, can yeah. hang up there and then you risk a recovery from the kicking team. Yeah, you'll see in, in Canadian football, most teams after a field goal uh, uh, make, they'll take the ball. You just want to eliminate some of the things that can happen on, on kickoff return. And now the Warriors are here on second and eight. Um, big second down here. It looks like Max staying in a 50 front. So uh, definitely a pass opportunity for the Warriors. Second down and eight. Caban to throw. Caban has a man in the middle of the field. It's caught. It's Evan Basiliga. First down for the Warriors. As I was saying before, this run game for the Warriors has really set up an opportunity to pass the ball in easier windows. Mack is going man-to-man, -man, which for a Nolan Caban, the quarterback, it's an easy read. You just find the receiver that gets open versus on zone. It's a little bit harder. you got to take a little bit more time. So this is a, just a classic run the ball to set up the pass as, as lots of teams want to do. First and 10 at the Waterloo 52. Caban, he's going to throw again on first down. Caban, middle of the field and Haru. Yeah. Flag comes in late. Haru couldn't get the extra hand out. He kind of looked like he wanted to backhand that because the left hand I think was tugged on and pulled behind his body and he couldn't get it around a get two hands on the football. Yeah, that was great coverage. Uh, who, who was, that was great coverage out there um, by Bland. But what he did was at the very end, he just grabbed Haru's left hand and not allowed him to get up. And, and the ref was in great position to make that call. And he's gonna get that call every time. 
So it's pass interference, another one on the Marauders. That's three pass interferences we've seen enforced today, two on McMaster and one on Waterloo. And so it's a first down Warriors at the McMaster 43. Tie game, and with the win, this is at the edge of Crossett's field goal range as well. Caban on the screen, got it away. Oh, what a tackle that was. Romel Samuel Slocum bubbled out and had the football, but Ethan Stewart blew it up and it's turned a big gain into only a gain of about three. Yeah, not only was that a great tackle, that was a great coverage by uh, Stewart. He ran from the from the weak side to the strong side, fought across all the bodies there and, and chased uh, Romel down on, on that slip route. Looks like we got second and seven. Big play for the Warriors, 24-24, eight minutes left in the game. 40 yard line. It would be a 47 attempt from here for Crossette. Springer on a little counter, Springer bounces. Springer still on his feet and he's just gonna get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe one more. So here comes Cole Crossette yeah, in the field goal unit through, yep. to try to retake the lead for the Warriors. Yeah, we ran, ran that uh, that counter tray play where we're pulling two bodies to the, to the boundary. Really got stuffed up nicely by McMaster. So Quentin Springer really just didn't want to take a negative play. Uh, did a cut back up back to the original line of scrimmage and give Cole Cressette a nice little uh, field goal here with the win right down the middle. 46. Timeout. And yeah, McMaster's going to take a timeout. They had 13 on the field. So that would have been disastrous for McMaster. Had yeah, the Warriors snapped that ball, one yeah, that, would yeah. have put the Warriors right in an area where they could have tried to convert the third down. So McMaster takes a timeout, which might come back to be important as well in a close game here with eight minutes and change left. It's tied right now, and Crossette's going to try to hit from 46 yards. Yeah, you got to think. I mean, this is... Uh yeah, pretty far kick. Cole definitely has a leg for it. His season long is 51. He hit a pair from 47 and 48 here against Laurier in the last home game, and this with the wind at his back. Cross set, a big one here from 46. Good snap. Good hold, kick is up, kick is wide to the back of the end zone. And it was hauled in and returned by Reed and Reed picks his way up and is taken down. I thought his heel might have touched the boundary on the back of the end zone. There's a flag There is on a the flag play. down. Yeah, that's a tough miss. Looks like uh, yeah, Cole just kicked it a little bit too heavy. Brought his leg across his body, which always makes you pull to the left as a kicker instead of following straight through. You know, we'd hope to get just one out of that too, but he caught it right on the end zone and, and smart on him to get it out. But lots of time left. Hopefully this penalty, we're just gonna see what the call is. It's against McMaster. Yeah, so they're, they're pinned deep here. If Waterloo Warriors can get a stop, uh, they potentially could set up for a uh, a potential, maybe a safety by the punter if they can they can go two and out here, uh, but one play at a time for the Warriors defense. Twenty four all. Ball will be spotted on the ten yard line. Looks like Max in a double tight formation, really looking to run the ball. And off to Shane, and a good play there by Divine Ugo to get his hands on the ball carrier. Modest gain of three maybe on first down and that'll set up a big, big second and seven. Yeah, nice play by Justin Gack. He didn't really make the tackle but he stood strong, taking on the double team. Again, with the double tight look, they're really looking for that inside zone. Let's see what, uh, yeah, what, what Coach Hopkins is gonna dial up here from the offense coordinator standpoint. Second and seven. Running that double cadence. Now he knows it's going to be a zone defense. Hall the throw. Has the time through the middle of the field. That's caught. Jackson Taylor. And he is short of the first down. A great stick by James. Those are those crosses we've been talking about all game. 
Uh, as soon as he caught it, he came up, made the tackle. It's got to be decision time for Coach Patasic. Yeah, look. third and a long one. Patasic went all the way down to look at the yeah, I think you line of punch, scrimmage. I think you got to punt this away. They're going to keep Hall and the offense on the field. So it's not even the short yardage package with Baresi. Wow, Coach Patasic, six minutes left in the game, making a big gamble, trusting his offensive line to, to create a big push here. Staying in gun. Staying in the gun, third down and a yard. Handoff, and he's got it. It was Duchesne. I'll tell you what, Coach Patasic put a lot of trust in his offense, and specifically his offensive line there. You know, from the big dogs up front, you got to think, that's got to give you some confidence. It's giving you a confidence boost from the head coach saying you can go get this yard, and they did just that. When we went to halftime, Luke, you said, as always, you would think that turnovers would play a role. We haven't seen one yet. Is this the time for the Warriors D to come up with one? Boy, wouldn't they love to. First down, Hall to throw through the middle of the field. It's caught. Adam Nemeth, uh, Aiden Nemeth, pardon me, makes the catch. A big gainer out near midfield for the Marauders. Yeah, that was a tight window. Uh, you know, those are those uh, those curl routes we like to call them at uh, 12 to 15 yards. But that was because we're playing a, a 30 front those, with those four linebackers. The windows are smaller than they're used to be with, with with three linebackers from a quarterback perspective. He really threw it on time. That was a nice play by the Brasser offense. 5-13 and rolling. First down, McMaster. Hall to throw again. Hall has Nemeth. Nemeth makes a move and then a stiff arm out to midfield, a gain of eight on first down. Yeah, it looks like, looks like they started when they when they went against the win, Adam. They're like, you know what? We're going to run the ball. And then Coach Hopkins like, let's do what we do from a master offense standpoint. Let's let Keegan Hall throw the ball around, make smart decisions. And that's what they're going with right now, and it's working. It has maybe calmed a little bit as well, but Keegan Hall, obviously 6'5", 230 out of Burlington. No problem muscling the ball through the breeze. Second down and two at the midfield stripe. Handoff is to Duchesne, and Duchesne breaks it. Duchesne, the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, McMaster. That's a nice run by Duchesne. As we said, coming into this game, he's the backup running back. Hasn't got many carries this year. But uh, it's sort of the opposite of what the Warriors have been doing. They've been pa McMaster pass, 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 set up that run, that little inside zone, breaks a tackle, goes to the house. Warriors now have four minutes left to put together a drive of their own. Marauders retake the lead on a drive that started at their own 10. And that third and one inside their own 20, Coach Patasic rolls the dice and it pays off. Keep in mind, folks, McMaster's playoff hopes are on the line here in this game versus the Warriors. That was a huge drive. We talked about, are they gonna be able to score going into the win? They trusted their senior quarterback. He made some big throws and a big run by Duchesne puts them up seven, four minutes left. Yeah, right now as the standings shake out, the Marauders tied with York and Carlton at two wins for that seventh spot, although Carlton is two and five. Still some games going on this evening as well as one more tomorrow, that's Laurier and Windsor. So four minutes and 13 seconds for the Warriors to respond here. Quickly out of town, oh, Laurier and Windsor are I in believe, action tonight. I believe they said, yeah, they yeah. Said Laurier was up 19-10 uh, at half. Yeah, 33-16 now. Okay. My mistake on that. Western also visiting Toronto, Guelph at York. Oh, we got a high kick, we got a high kick. High kick, it's dangerous, it can be recovered. Who has the football? This is this is what Who we talked it? about. 
The, Waterloo has the ball. Yeah, the kick return is standing on their own goal line. And that's ambitious, even though we, we know McMaster uh, has a good, uh, kicker has a good leg. That was ambitious standing that far back. Uh, Got to be aware of that, that high kick. And, um, Warriors fortunate to get the bounce there, and now the offense comes on the field. So Waterloo, decent starting field position at their own 38. Trying to respond. Caban, handoff is to Springer. Springer has a corner. Springer with a big run out of bounds at the Mac 50 yard line. That'll put him up over 200 yards on the ground. Yeah, I got to shout out Coach Pretoria. He told me, he said, you be ready for this. And, uh, and he was true. You know, I like Coach Conway, even though we got the wind, clock's running out, we're down seven. He's staying true to his game plan, running Quinton Springer. And we're uh, still in that heavy package. Up to 2.04 for Springer now on the ground. He's got it again. Bounces off a of one tackle and plunges ahead for a modest gain of two. So now a second and long for the Warriors to face here. Yeah, Coach Conway's got to know that he's if he can get four, three or four yards, he's going to have a third down opportunity to go for it uh, again. So that's got to play in your mind as a play caller. You don't need to get all seven, all eight right now. Looks like we're staying again in the heavy package with our 6-0 line. Second down and eight. Caban to throw. Logan Haru with the reception and he's out close to the marker and it's enough for our first down for Waterloo. Yeah, I like the play call. Everybody was in the box anticipating what we were in the booth here of a potential run. A uh, little play action, get it outside to Haru who's our who's our speed guy, our kick returner. So he's used to running uh, tight in space, first down Warriors. Scored his first career touchdown at Guelph a couple of weeks ago. 39 yard line, 2.53 to go here. They will whistle it in after the three minute stoppage. Friday night lights, Adam, you gotta love it. Doesn't get better than this, Luke. It's 31-24. Warriors wanting a tie. And a major here on first down. It's a run by Springer. Been a workhorse tonight. We mentioned over 200 yards, well over 30 carries too for Springer. That's yeah, the first time we've really seen a heavy usage of one running back for the Warriors. Usually Springer and Anthony Miller are rotating. So you gotta wonder, is he getting fatigued? Is his legs getting a little heavy? We know he's came in really good shape here. So let's see if we can end off Second and five and a whistle. The spot is incorrect, so they will fix the spot. It's on the McMaster 35 yard line. Once again, I think we're we're gonna have two downs to get this instead of one, so just gotta continue to get positive yardage each time you get the ball, knowing that you have three chances to get 10. Had to reset the clock, so back at 231 where it's supposed to be after that ball was respotted. Second and five from the 35 of Mac. It's to Springer, Springer. Springer lowers the shoulder. Tries to get the corner. All right, big third down coming. Huge third down. He didn't get a, as much yardage as he would have wanted. Uh, only about two and a half. So a huge third down. This, for all intents and purposes, could be the game. Still lots of time, obviously. 2.21 left, but. What's Coach Conway want to dial up here in Coach Pretoria? Are they going to want to go to the bell cow? Give it to Quinn Springer, see if he can get it, or are they gonna try and throw it for a first down? Third down, and a long three. Caban, Caban to throw it, has a man oh, tipped away. A flag comes in. Pass was intended for Tyler Tierney, but a flag comes in. I'll tell you what, that is a awesome play by the senior, Nolan Caban. He had Basiliga in the flats. He was covered. Instead of taking a sack, he calmly backpedaled, threw the corner route up. 
didn't get the completion, but got the, got the penalty to continue the drive. Pass interference is the call. So the drive continues for the Warriors with 2.02 to go. That was a 50-50 call, Adam. I don't think it was a blatant pass interference. It could have went either way. Obviously, the Warriors got the benefit of the doubt. First down and 10 for Waterloo. Caban to throw again. Caban intended for Basiliga. It was a little behind him, and Ethan Stewart got a hand in there as well on first down. It's incomplete. Yeah, they tried to catch Mack off guard there. They haven't thrown the ball on first down in quite some time. I don't mind the play call. Tough execution there. Now we're at second and 10, but as I've said all drive, we got two downs, so we can treat this almost like a first down from a play call perspective. 157 to go. Clock stopped on the incompletion. So no need to blow it in here for the officials. Ball on the 18 yard line. Handoff is to Springer. Springer down to about the 11. Yep. Gain of eight on second and 10. Like I said, that's kind of a play you would call on a first down or, or a second down knowing you had that third down. But once again, here we go. The, the pressure is on the Warriors here to get another third down conversion. It's gonna be about four yards. It was only a gain of six or maybe seven. Third down, another one. Can the Warriors convert it? 136 and counting to play. Caban to roll, Caban has him in. It's Slocum, touchdown Warriors! Ramel Samuel one Slocum. Minute, 26 seconds left, the Warriors put down probably their best drive of the season so far. Multiple third down conversions. Nolan staying tough, staying strong back there. Awesome play called by Coach Conway. Everybody thought Quinton Springer would get the ball over 200 yards today. Play action, run the slip route into the flats, deliver it on time. Touchdown Warriors trying to tie the game up here. Cross set, an important extra point. And it is up and through, a penalty marker's down. I think a Marauder jumped. But the extra point is good. So 127 left, 31-31. I wonder if uh, a Marauder jumped. Does coach think about going for it? Doesn't look like it. All right, take the tie, here we go. You know, come back to think about that, Adam. When when they got that one point off the kickoff, right? I said it's a long, lo it's a lot of game left, but it did come back to prove to prove pivotal. Obviously, the Warriors, uh, you know, how the game played out, what it made it made a change a little bit. They might have went for two more at McMaster earlier, but yeah, 31-31. Thanksgiving weekend, Friday, under the lights, great weather, great time. OUA football, gotta love it. 31 all. Wow, we got, hey, we, we took seconds. the penalty here, Adam, so we're on the 50. Cole could try oh, booting this one through the end zone for one. The big leg of Cole Crossett, who missed the long field goal. Will he just but try that, to lean into this that's, one? That's got to be the play here. If you're Coach Erdman and Coach Pretoria, you say, hey, go have a go at this one. Yeah, with the wind, it has died a little bit, but it's still at the back of Crossett. Cross set, big long kick. Oh, it oh, hit the upright. What a no. horrible break for the Warriors. The ball hit the upright. What a bad break. That could have went through the end zone. That had the leg, that had the distance. That was the play. Tough break for the Warriors. Well, we got 126 left to play. We got Keegan Hall coming out. Nation's second leading passer. Against the wind, is Coach Patasic gonna dial it up or play for overtime? Doesn't get better than this. Unbelievable, oh, by the man. way, for a kickoff attempt like that to hit the upright. Add to the drama. That was an opportunity with that penalty yardage added on. So Keegan Hall and the McMaster offense, the handoffs to Duchesne. 
and Duchesne gains about six or seven on first down. Yeah, to have a chance at a field goal, you gotta think McMaster's gotta get it to around the 35, maybe even the maybe a little closer than that. Um, so lots of space here. But a minute 21 in, in uh, Canadian football is a lot of time. It's so the eternity. Clock, the clock, clock's not really an issue right now. Max still has a timeout too, but a minute 10 to go. Hand off again to Duchesne. And Duchesne gets I mean, the first down, but. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword too, Adam. You gotta think, because if they go two and out here, they kick it back to the Warriors who do have the win and can try a long field goal. I mean, us Bills fans know that happened to the Buffalo <laughs> Bills versus uh, uh, the Texans on, on Sunday. We don't want that, so it looks like they're playing smart. They're gonna try and run the ball a little bit and probably let Keegan spin it here maybe under one minute. Yeah, you can't be too conservative, but worst case scenario for Mac here has to be the ball, the time runs out with the ball in your hands. Yeah, that's what they're looking for. Second, uh, first down, pardon me, and 10 from the 31. Hand off again is to Duchesne. He's had a really good night for McMaster. Yeah, I've been impressed with, uh, with his running ability, especially not getting too many carries coming into the game. Right, so the, now that they're, they're getting some momentum here, 37 seconds, I anticipate uh, Coach Hopkins as the offensive coordinator to, to dial up a couple passes. Yeah, it's hard to know what Horvat's range is into the win here. It does feel like it's, again, a little less intense, but the flags are still whipping over by the scoreboard. Hall to throw. Hall has time. Eyes downfield. Hall is just going to get out of bounds after a gain of about three with Divine Ugo and Keyshawn Bowen in his wake. Yeah, so now Coach Coach Potastic doesn't really have to worry too much about giving Waterloo the ball back with time to, to win the game. There is 20 seconds left. Uh, you know, but you have to also, like we talked about, think about a potential turnover and what that would mean. Uh, a lot of things in play here for this play call in second down. Second and seven with 21 seconds left because Hall went out of bounds, the clock stopped. Kind of no man's land here for McMaster. Hall the throw. Hall still looking downfield. He's gonna take off again. And just short of midfield with 14 seconds left. Yeah. And does McMaster- one timeout left, yeah. Yeah, so. There is a timeout. I think McMaster just took their last one. All right, so 14 seconds left. First down, you'd think they have, they have easily two plays they can work with. They don't have any timeouts left. So if they go over the middle of the field, it will have to be a pretty significant gain. If they can get out of bounds on a quick throw, that'll give them a second opportunity. And their second opportunity, they can go over the middle of the field because in Canadian football, you do get one more chance after the clock hits zero. So you can run your kick team there. The clocks can strike zero and you can have a go at it. So a little bit of in play here. This is an important play call. I anticipate Waterloo to, to, to protect those outside throws. Um, but some nervous times here on both sides of the ball. Sure is, yeah. And you mentioned it, Luke. You know, as soon as that ball is spotted, if there's time on the clock, when the clock is wound again and the officials blow in play that play is live regardless of when that clock hits zero so what do the marauders and keegan hall do here hall the throw hall it is knocked away pass intended for everett reed Keyshawn bowen on the coverage with nine seconds to go Still time for the McMaster Marauders to get a chunk play and potentially run their field goal unit out. So you can't play too much of a prevent defense if you're the Warriors. With into the teeth of the win, you don't think that they would be in range to try to knock a single. Yeah, I anticipate, anticipate a, not a Hail Mary, but some, some quad concepts like they're coming out in with a potential vertical shot. Hall. Pressure comes, just has to dump it off to the 
running back Duchesne who scooches out of bounds with two seconds left. They're gonna have a chance at it. Very smart play by Duchesne. If he didn't get out of bounds there, it would have not, the clock would have ran out. McMaster came out with, with a screen pass. You know what, I like the play call. Coach dials it up, gives his kicker a chance. So it'll be Horvat from 47 yards from the right hash for the win for McMaster yeah, on what's been a classic of a game. You know, start of the game, we uh, started the drive, sorry, we steady for probably the 35, so we're about five yards longer than I thought, but if he gives it a go, he has a chance. Here Into we go, the win, folks. one of the best kickers in the nation, Horvat from 47. Well, coach is icing him. And Bertoya is gonna take a timeout. 47 yards, I think, you know what, watching some warm-ups and watching them kick into this breeze, 47's probably at the max. I would have said 45, uh, so we're about a couple yards longer. Uh, another thing that, that's in play is we got Logan Haru, I believe it is, back there. Uh, yes, it is, yeah, it and is so Haru. a potential return. Uh, we'll never, well, we'll see what uh, what they can come, come out in here, but Thanksgiving weekend, Adam. I just want to say, you know, happy Thanksgiving to all the folks listening. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's going to be a great weekend. The weather's been awesome. So everybody, uh, yeah, we're thankful right now for a great football game. Sure are. This has been a doozy of a game to end the home schedule for the Warriors here at Warrior Field. we got a great turnout, too. All right, here we go. Are we going to go to overtime, or is the Warriors going to suffer another heartbreaker loss? 47 yards, Michael Horvat. Went the snap, cooling. And another whistle. Is that, is that allowed? Can you do two timeouts in a row? That's what they're at McMaster's asking. The Warriors called two timeouts consecutively and illegally. I think that might not be a rule in uh, OUA football. Steph Potasik's getting the... He's asking about it, yeah, which yeah. is fine. He's got the... Coach is just making a sweat. He's making all the fans sweat. He's making the crowd nervous. We've got a little queen playing here. All right, so now Horvat, we have to go. Now it's game on. Horvat has had <laughs> all kinds of time to think about it. Crowd of almost 1,000 here at Warrior Field gets loud. A game-winning opportunity. Horvat, kick is up. Kick is going to be wide. And it's caught by Haru at the goal line. He's going to run it out. Haru gets down. That no a, good. About five yards short, as we said, coming in the drive. That was a great kick, it was online, but the breeze picked up and it pushed it. We're going to overtime. And for a moment there, Luke, it when that ball good. was in the <laughs> air, it looked good. And then the next moment, it looked like the ball could squeak out of the side of the end zone yep. as it that was took high a drama. hard high left drama. turn. Haru, though, tracked it down well, caught it on the fly, and off to overtime we go. So. Overtime for those unfamiliar. It's been a while since we had an overtime game. It's each team gets a chance at the possession starting at the 35. Yeah, you got to think we're going to be going uh, to the camera left here. So, so each team we're just going to be playing with the win. But uh, I think that's what the coaches are discussing right now in the middle. Overall, this has just been a great game. Waterloo's played to their strengths with Quinton Springer on the ground. Max played to their strengths with Keegan Hall through the air. Uh, both defenses have made stops when they could. Both offenses have made plays when, when they needed to. And so uh, excited for an overtime here. High drama. The last overtime game we've seen here was a triple overtime thriller in 2019 between the Warriors and the Laurier Golden Hawks. Laurier won that game 53-50. Well, that one down hurt. It did hurt indeed. And you know, not unlike this one, the score after regulation, if memory serves, was 30-30. This one 31-31. 
Overall, Adam, you know, we talked about this uh, a little bit during the broadcast, is Waterloo being an 0-16. And, but this is the fight that we want to see. You know, me personally, I'm, I'm an alumnus. We talk to, I'm, I'm connected with the alumni group, and we just like to see these guys be battling. We've gone through seasons of, of, of no wins where the games weren't even close. You know, McMaster's a, a traditional powerhouse program, and uh, they're, they're fighting for the playoffs. And, you know, we had 31-31. We had our backup quarterback. We had our backup running back. You know, Coach Bertoy has got the boys uh, up and playing, playing their hearts out here. You've got to love to see it. Yeah, the fight is something that's uh, certainly been apparent tonight for the Warriors and all season, right? I mean, we saw Laurier come in here on homecoming weekend, and some were saying it was going to be a six or seven touchdown difference, and the Warriors stuck right with them. Uh, we saw the Warriors punch back hard at Guelph, even though they came up short. We saw the Warriors come out with a big lead in the first quarter against York and then fall short. So the fact that the Warriors are putting this fight up is certainly uh, a sign of good things to come for this Warriors program, both now and in the immediate future, as it looks like McMaster will have the first possession. Yeah, so in overtime, you'd like to play defense first. Reason you want to, you want to play defense first is that if the offense settles for a field goal, you know that you can also settle for a field goal. If the offense scores a touchdown, now you have three downs to score a touchdown opposed to settling for a field goal as you would if it was your first possession. So this is a benefit for the Warriors uh, to start on defense. Hopefully, they can hold them to a field goal opportunity, and if they can, then they'll have a chance to win the game when they get the ball. Yeah, and two big leg kickers with the wind at their backs, you'd have to figure well within the range as the ball is spotted at the 35. So first possession to McMaster. All right, so they ran their double count. They know they got zone. Hall to throw on first down. Nobody open. Divine Ugo will force him out of bounds after a gain of three. Hey, Adam, I'll tell you what happened there. They ran their double cadence, and they noticed that our field side half back was playing high, so they wanted to throw that 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 12 yard curl as we talked about. What happened was our Sam backer did a great job of screaming underneath that, and that's what Keegan Hall was looking at. He didn't like it. Smart veteran move, not throwing it would have been picked. Scrambled out for a positive play, but ultimately good job by the Warriors on defense. Second down and seven. Hall with three receivers to his right. Hall will look that way. Middle of the field, he's got a man, it's cooling. Complete for a first down inside the Waterloo 20 to the 18. Yeah, Cooling's just sitting in the zone. Uh, the, that time was the same play, but our linebacker didn't get out underneath it in time. And so uh, Keegan Hall loves that play, throws it well, first down Mack. I'd like to see the D-line get a little bit of pressure. I know we only have three rushing right now, which is very hard, but Keegan's got a lot of time so far to throw. Handoff there is to Duchesne. And on first down, set up for a gain of maybe five or six. We're gonna call it maybe a gain of four, in fact. All right, so Warriors have gotta watch these crossing routes that they've been so successful with all game, coming usually from the boundary into the field. Keegan looks looks deep for his deep ends and then comes to the crosser. We'll see if that, that's, that's what they dial up and if Warriors can stop it. Second down and five. Hall to throw, Hall, middle of the field, it's incomplete. That's the exact play they drew up, but Hall decided to take the overtop throw instead of come underneath. Now it's decision time. This is why the Warriors wanted to play defense first, because now Mack's going to try a field goal, and Warriors can win it with a touchdown or settle for a field goal for uh, to tie to go to second, to go to double overtime if they need to. So it'll be Horvat on for the field goal. It'll be a 20-yard attempt, I believe. See where he puts the puck down. Maybe, yeah, right on the 20. 
So Horvat, who missed the potential game winner into the wind, will get a chance with the wind at his back. Kick is up and through. So Mack puts up three points. It's the Warriors' turn. A touchdown wins it. A yeah. field goal will tie it. What's going to be interesting here, Adam, is how confident is Chris Pretoria going to be in Cole Crissett kicking a field goal? If they don't get any first downs, is he going to go for it on third down or is he going to let them have a chance at it? It's going to be an interesting strategy here. This first couple plays, you know, obviously, is, uh, is huge for the Warriors to get a little closer and give Co Coach Pretoria some more confidence running out his field goal team if we need to. So Warriors turn on offense in overtime. Hand off to Springer. Springer. I'll tell you what, Springer got stopped for no gain there and he, he dragged that defender. Yeah, he was right at the line of scrimmage, stood up, but instead it's a gain of about three. Yeah, They'll they, call it a gain of four at the 31. Yeah, they brought up a, a half blitz off the edge. We didn't have anybody cr uh, hack back on it, so he was wide open, but this is what I'm talking about. Do we want, if we're getting three downs here, we're getting two. Normally the head coach will tell the offensive coordinator if he has three downs, because that might change the play call. Caban, hand off to Springer. Springer can't get away. Now he does to the 30, and he stopped there. Well, what's coach going to do? So it'll be third and five from the 30. It would be a 37-yard attempt, and that's what the Warriors will do to try to tie the game. So Cole Crissette always had the leg. He's always had the distance. It's accuracy that's been his issue throughout his time here at Waterloo as our kicker. Uh, we all, everybody has the full trust in him. As you can see, Coach Pretoria running out the field goal team. Full trust that he can make this kick. Senior player on senior night to go to double overtime. 37 yard attempt. Cross set to tie. Snap is high, kick is up, kick is oh. wide left. Same as last and time. And the Marauders win it. The kick sailed just wide left and McMaster wins it 34-31. Well, the Warriors played their hearts out, Adam. That's a they got to hang their heads high. Some tough breaks. Got to think of that kickoff that hit the uprights. Got to think of a few other things, but uh, you know what? McMaster Marauders got the victory when they needed it. They kept their season alive. Congratulations to them on a, on a hard-fought victory. So the Marauders move to an important three and four as they inch closer to a playoff spot. The Warriors fall to 0-7 as they'll wrap things up next week on the road in Kingston at the Queens Gales. It's been a tough season for the Warriors, but they fought here at home to the very end, a 34-31 defeat to the McMaster Marauders in overtime. So for Luke